any longer. Are you ready? Press R in chat if you're ready. Are you ready to hear from RPG after almost a year of silence? Everybody's wanted to hear from him. The lovers, the haters, the Ralph of Males, the Feaser Heads, they've all wanted this. And you're getting it live right now on the motherfucking kill stream. RPG, welcome back to the show, sir. How you doing? Yeah! <laughs> Yo, Ethan Ralph, what is going on, man? I am feeling great today. How about you? I, it does feel uh, like a red letter day, I have to say. <laughs> I have to say. Uh, and it's good to hear your voice. It's been a while since I heard it. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's been a while. It's been a, been a really long time since I've done a stream, obviously, as you know. And uh, it's kind of weird. I have to admit, it's a little bit weird, but trying to uh, trying to start things up again. So what better way to start things back up by calling in to the kill stream? You and me both, tag teaming Kinoche, or as I call him, Pedo Day, because he's a humongous faggot. And he's now permanently banned from Twitter, which is literally his entire life. There is literally nothing more important in the world, in the universe, to Pedo Gay than his Twitter, and now it is gone forever. And that gay op they're trying to run, you covered it earlier in the show, yes. that gay op, kiss all pedos, with the shop. <laughs> you, you call the bigger pedals, which is funny. I call them kiss all pedals. <laughs> Either one works. Yeah. <laughs> They're both fitting for him. <laughs> kiss all pedals is better, though. We shouldn't give them a crown. We shouldn't give them any sort of crown. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. A little more fitting to kiss all pedals. Uh, but they're trying to run that up. It's not going to work. It's already been debunked by, by you, by me. So, uh, feeling incredible today and many are saying today is the best day ever and i cannot agree more i by the way awesome uh return uh intro there from you sir i try to get it high, and i think you even out hype me uh with your promo there that doesn't happen too often i would i don't admit it too often either uh so i think you even out hype me uh now first off Talk about a little bit about what uh, what happened to you, for those who don't know. Let's just go through the whole thing, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I did figure at some point uh, we would get to that, but we could get to it straight away. Um, well, we're so, going to get back to uh, Kino Gay. Don't worry about that. But but just wh what happened exactly, uh, and why were you driven away? What did they do? Like, what, what exactly occurred? Yeah, sure. So it's a really, really long story if you really want to get into the nuance and the complexity of things. But we're, we're not going to do that. We're trying yes, to make this sure. as uh, yeah. simple as possible. So so basically, um, what happened was Gabe Hoffman, and there's a lot more to this story. There's a lot. It's not just Gabe. There's a, there was a whole conspiracy. There was a whole op. We exposed it all. But um, to put things simply, as I said, Gabe Hoffman instructed, demanded the Kino Casino play a video of me, the, the Imagine RPG TV remix, which, by the way, has gone triple platinum, okay? <laughs> so every, everybody is loving it. Legendary tune. Um, but that was a video that everybody knew at the time. It was not exactly the most flattering for me because... Um, obviously, I was a deranged Nixie there for uh, two years or so, right? So to play this video of me where I'm, where I'm you know, singing Nick's praises and, and things between me and Nick have, have totally shifted since then. So everything is, you know, cool between us and that's all been squashed. But at the time, I was a deranged Nick Seether. And uh, they played this clip of me knowing that it was, you know, it's an embarrassing clip. Everybody knew that that would be embarrassing for me. That's why they were playing it. 
And a lot of people, they get the events wrong when they're going through, you know, what happened, the timeline. People like to retcon. They like to rewrite history. They like to make things sound as, as bad as possible. You're dealing with, with lying faggots and seethers who are never, ever going to uh, give it to you straight. But what actually happened after the Kino Casino did that was um, I actually, I was supposed to stream that day. I was supposed to stream after that or the next day, I guess it was. I was supposed to do a stream, but I decided not to because basically what they did before the entire sector was they they launched this, uh, they basically launched this salvo upon me. And initially, what I, you know, my, my gut or my instinctual reaction was that I... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, hold on. Uh, we lost him. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait. Go back. Repeat that. So, so my reaction... Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You're back. Okay. We just lost your last sentence, but just repeat your last sentence. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, um... So, basically, you know, they played that video, and then what I was going to do was I was going to next... The next day, I was going to, um, you know, do a response stream, but I said, you know what? I don't want to be... Oh, no! We are getting some funny technical issues here. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Wow. Are we trying to be DDoSed here? Let me see. Uh, okay. Now try to speak. Okay. Unmute yourself again, RPG. We might just have to do Google Meets. I oh, fucking telegram, you son of a bitch. Telegram, you son of a bitch! Okay, hold on a sec. Let's see. Okay, you have to unmute yourself again. Uh, also, I'm just gonna... S yeah, it's not gonna work on telegram. Telegram, what is that? That's crazy. It wouldn't be the kill stream without some technical issues. Okay. Um, just, let's see. Uh... Let's see, telegram glitching. I think it's fitting, though, that that happened. <sighs> All right, let me also, because, let's see. It sucks because he was mid-narrative. Okay. Okay. All right, let's try Telegram. He wants to try Telegram one more time. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay. Okay, go ahead. We'll try Telegram one more time. If not, we have Google Meet on standby. Telegram sometimes is glitchy, but uh, it was a funny glitch, at least. It was like, uh, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but go ahead and, and return to, to speaking. Okay, so I actually, I was, like, talking for, like, probably two minutes there before I realized we were disconnected. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure which card of the story I was up to. Um, and I don't want to repeat too much, because I, I don't want it to be boring. That's so, but, but I'll just hop back, back into it. So, um, you got, you heard me talk about the part where I said they played the video, right? They played yes. the Imagine video. Yes. Okay. Okay, which Gabe Hoffman instructed them to do, because Gabe Hoffman, um, basically with Gabe, he found out through one of the A-logs that, um, you know, I didn't like him. I wanted nothing to do with him. Like, even as an A-log, I wanted nothing to do with him just because, like, he's, like, one of the last people in the sector um, that, that anybody wants to associate with. Like, even though I was a Nick Seether, being associated with Gabe Hoffman is just, like, horrendous optics. And there's nothing, you know, likable about the guy at all. He's totally cringe. He's a uh, complete faggot and loser. So, um you know, he wanted to get revenge on me, and he was using his proxies to do so, Kino Casino being one of his proxies. So they played this video knowing that it wouldn't be flattering for me as a mix either. Okay, so the next day I was supposed to do a stream, but I didn't do the stream because I was like, you know what? I don't know if this is going to be like a sustained attack against me or if it was just a joke 
and everybody, you know, they're just going to move on to like the next day's content. So I didn't do a stream because I wanted to take a, a wait and see approach. I wanted to see, okay, like what's their next move? Anyway, turns out that the next move was to dox the fuck out of me. Now, there's people in the audience right now, the haters, the seeders, they hear me say that, and they're going, they didn't dox you? You were already doxed! And it's like, okay, uh, fuckos, I know that I was already doxed, but still, if you are signal boosting someone's private information, if you're taking someone's private information that is less known and you're making it more known, that is called a dox. And that is exactly why when I, uh, when they say I doxed Adam Daly porcelain, that was exactly why I did that to make the point. I did that to make the point because it's like, okay, well, if somebody has already been doxxed and therefore can't be doxxed, then I'm going to put his name out there. And then when I did that, all of the pearl clutchers, they all lost their, even to this day, even to this day, they say, oh, RPG, doxxed porcelain, even though, and then they come with every convoluted justification for why that was a dox, but what they did to me wasn't a dox. And look at the fallout from that stream that the Kino Casino did. I've been, not to sound like a baby, wow, 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 but I've been dealing with constant harassment for the last year, and I haven't even done a stream. Now, don't get me wrong, I am, you know, I am engaging with it a little bit here and there on Twitter. That does happen. I'm not going to lie, but I've tried so many times to just move the fuck on because I have a lot of things going on in my life right now that are so much more important than this fake and gay online bullshit. And it's like no matter what I do, if I if I pay attention, I don't pay attention, I respond, I don't respond, it literally doesn't matter. They will always come up with some rationale for why it's okay to attack you. And then and then after like a prolonged weeks long attack you respond once with one little word, and then they'll use that. They'll use that as a, see, see? You know, he responded. And therefore, everything we did to for the last month. So it's like, and, and Ralph, you know better than anybody how it goes with these people. Yes. And that's why, actually, you know, like, that's why after going through it myself, I, it actually gave me an entirely new perspective on you, because... Like, as you know, you and me used to not be the best of friends. That's true. That's true. We had a whole war. Yeah. We did. We did. But we came out of it on the other side. We reconciled. We respect each other now. And honestly, I think it's fucking awesome. Now, you know, those people out there who they want me to condemn you. They want me to say, Ethan Ralph, you're a piece of shit. And you did this and you did that. Now, look, here's the message that I have for those people. Is Ethan Ralph a perfect angel? No. But are you? Am I? Is anybody watching this stream, listening to this stream right now? Nobody's fucking perfect. If you put anybody under a microscope, you're going to find something. You're going to find something that you could criticize, that you can condemn. And so, you know, I, I'm not going to do any of that for these people. These people are the scum of the earth. You know better than anybody what these people are capable of. These are not the good guys. They have no moral high ground. And looking back in retrospect at everything, you know, you would say to me as one of the A-logs, you would say to Medicare, you would say, you know, to all, all the Kiwi Farms types. Back then, I was a, I was a deranged seether. So when you would say stuff like everything is fair game, I would be like, how can Ethan Ralph say that? This is, this is appalling. How can he do that? This is against the rules, right? Because there's these right. extra rules that nobody fucking, nobody no, fucking, awesome. Nobody, but, but they always have the rule book out and ready to go. And they say, oh, well, according to, the, the rules are fucking fake. And this is what a lot of people actually don't realize. So basically it's like, you know, there's a propaganda war going on. And, and the ALOGs are pushing this propaganda, right? There's like these central accounts that, that do it. And what people don't realize is like, it's literally no different from how the media, the mainstream media operates with Trump. Where, like, you have Fox News, and you have the New York Times, and you have CNN. And what does CNN do when they're covering Trump? They lie, they deceive, they make shit up, they edit, they shop, they doctor. It's li literally everything that Trump is up against. It's nonstop gay ops and people who are trying to take him down for personal reasons. 
So when you when you hear these fake justifications, oh he's uh, he's anti democratic and oh he's a fascist, none of this stuff is real. All these people are getting duped. They're being lied to. They're taking the bait. If, if you really, and by the way, I'm sorry if I'm like ranting here. No, keep going. It's, it's I, been I like such a long go. time. No, I want you to keep going. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, so it's crazy to me because when I look and see what all these people, like their version of events and like what they say and, oh, he did this and, oh, he did like, it, it's so disconnected from reality. It's like, it's, it's shocking to me because, well, because I really, like, at the end of the day, what did I really do? What, what crimes do I stand accused of? They say that I overreacted. They say I overreacted to being touched. Yeah, and, there's a, and, and this is why. Because look at what has come out of it. They say, oh, the Groypers doxed you first. Okay, the Groypers were my enemies at the time. They were my enemies at the time. You and me were enemies at the time. That's so, right. yes, at the time, was I upset? I was, of course. Who wouldn't be? But, but that is what, that's what happens. And, and, I, and I was doing fucked up shit, too. You know, like, one thing that I ever got to say to you, and what I'm about to say, I, I don't want an apology. I don't want forgiveness because it should never be forgiven. It, 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 there's no excuse for, you know, what I'm about to apologize for. Anything I ever said about your mother is totally unacceptable. And I, and I never got the opportunity to, you know, say that and get that off my chest. But there's just absolutely no justification. It's just when you get when you get wrapped up in, in this, this sector garbage, this sector toxicity, it really it really makes you do so like I, I've done a lot of things when I was streaming as an A log that I've come to uh, totally and completely regret. Um, because like I said, I have a totally new perspective on, on the reality of the situation. But getting back to like the um, by the way, casino. W once you said that, I want to say this too because I said some things about your mother and family and stuff, and I want to apologize to you for that. Uh, but when, like you said, once you get in this mindset and it's you know a battle and you know a lot of things get said um, that you know you wouldn't normally say, right? Uh, and you know, yeah, we both we both went. Uh, below the belt uh, and so I want to apologize for that as well um, so I, I just wanted to say that and I'll let you I'll let you continue but the, the whole point and you're hitting on it right here is we were enemies we were right. on opposite sides the people who ostracized you who uh, basically tried to ruin you and have kept you from streaming and visited your house uh you know taking pictures outside of your house it took you to court tried to put restraining put restraining orders on you uh tried to ruin your life were your supposed allies right exactly and that right there that is the difference the difference is nick at the time we were enemies you at the time we were enemies so does that make what does that justify what happened no but it can be explained it could be rationalized this is what people do when they're fighting with each other but when it came to the kino casino when it came to judas when it came to all these other people all these other snakes and rats and, and cockroaches what was their excuse their excuse was oh it's funny oh it is funny for us to completely smear you to completely destroy your reputation lie about you so so that's the thing that's why one cannot be compared to the other because if an enemy attacks me that makes sense but if people that i'm friendly with if people that are that I'm allied with like that's the thing where are we supposed to be this triumvirate me judas the, the kino casino and we were supposed to take down america first and we were supposed to take down nick fuentes and then what ended up happening is everybody snaked on me because that mission had failed it became totally clear to everybody that that was never going to happen okay if you look at look at how nick is doing nick is doing better than ever he is absolutely and people are saying oh you're sucking him off oh no that is an objective statement of truth he is doing better than ever before. He's raising more money than ever before. He has more more popularity, more influence than ever before. They just put him back on Twitter. He already has 300,000 followers. He blew past Destiny. He is influential. And I didn't get into streaming because I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to be a fucking drama streamer. 
I got into streaming because I care about, I very deeply, to my core, care about politics. I care about the political conservative mission. And there is nobody who better represents the, the thing that means most to me in this world than Nick Fuentes. And those are just the facts. People aren't going to like me saying that. They're going to no, because you, you can't say one, one kind thing about the guy. You can't say, and they're going to say, oh, well, they did this to you. They did that to you. Yes, he did. I know that he did. We reconciled. We put it past us. We locked horns, and then we both moved. And, and the thing is, it's not like I was edited for five minutes. It was two fucking years. It was more than two years. So, like, did, did I not did I not war with him long enough? Do I have to do it for the rest of my life? Especially when it becomes so obvious that his star is not fading. He's hanging out with Kanye West. He's having dinner with Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? Like, this yes. is not me. This is not me going on a, uh, you know, the PR tour for Nick. He doesn't need that. It's just because these people are totally fucking delusional. You see them, they're still pushing these years, years old gay ops on him. It's like, it's like all they have left is the greatest hits because there's nothing currently that's happening that they could use against Nick America first. And like, it's just, guys, if you don't like Nick, okay, move the fuck on though. Like, it's, it's just time. It's been years now. That was kind of. That was kind of the way I was starting to feel because it, it got to a point for me with the stream where like Nick was obviously winning. Nick had obviously won. And then I had to, you know, go out there. This was towards the end. This was not for a very long time. Right. But towards the end, I would go out there and put my game face on. And like, because the thing is, I typecast myself as a Nick A-Log. Right. So now it's like, no matter what Nick does, I have to come up with a way to tell my audience that, oh, Nick Nini Kanye West, here's why that's a bad thing. How fucking embarrassing is that? Like, I, I cringe when I think about the fact that I, I actually attempted, but the, but the derangement had taken over my, my mind, and that's all Judas's stream is. That's all Judas does. Every night. Okay, all, every fucking night. Because he has to. Because he has nothing else. Because he is talentless. Because he is a pussy. Because he is a coward. Because he is a bitch. Because he is a snake. And Judas, by the way, you know, for those, this is the first time you're hearing it, Judas did snake me first, which is why everything that happened afterwards happened. And I, I don't want to go through the full history of it all, sure. but Judas did a stream when I was taking heavy fire. Judas did a stream where he just verbatim echoed the talking points of my enemies. The fucking beta. And he was shaking and he was trembling as he's known to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he like he did against Nick. Fuck. We'll get to that yeah. in a minute too. But yes, keep going. he got absolutely steamrolled by Nick in front of the whole fucking movement, the whole fucking sector. What an embarrassment. This is your moment. This is. Well, you saw what happened, and I'll just jump in and let you continue, but I just want to tell a little bit of my side. Of course, go I had my falling ahead. out with Nick uh, last summer, and I uh, went to war, and, you know, I went to war hard. Uh, and looking back on it now, um, I see it as a mistake uh, because I joined in league with a bunch of snakes, including Judas, uh, and you saw how that ended with them stabbing me in the back uh, and, you know, trying to ruin me, right? Uh, and, you know, I'm not trying to brag, but... You you know, I was putting in heavy work uh, against America first uh, for what I consider now to be trivial reasons, right? I just felt disrespected and I had my personal life was falling apart and I was kind of susceptible to to a heel turn, you know what I mean? Uh, right. And I went in uh, and they couldn't handle it because I was taking over the game, basically. Uh, and so they attacked Power Chat. They started attacking me. Oh, he's relapsed now. Let's make Ralph the content. And they basically broke the coalition um, that I had built. And then I realized these people are faggots. Why would I want to be on the same team as them? And then also, you know, I haven't talked to Nick since everything happened. Um, but, you know, since Gaza especially, um, I don't feel any need uh, to attack Nick Fuentes and make that my show. Uh, and, you know, we align on more than we disagree, right? Uh, and exactly. so, and I don't have to do that. 
Like you said, that's not what I'm more talented than that. I don't have to be a professional Nick Seether. Uh, I can do interviews with people like you and Patrick Howley's coming on later and debates and stuff like that. I don't want to typecast myself as that. And also, I don't want to be doing the work of the Jewish Zionist Gabe Hoffman, who is the real uh, brains behind the whole attack on Nick and funds the whole operation. Yeah, yeah, and all that stuff. So I actually. I don't have an exact date planned yet for when I'm going to do my comeback stream, but I've actually I've been working on the show notes for that for uh, a few months now, and people are going to be quite surprised when they see... The, like The thing is, when you talk about conspiracies, everybody, they roll their eyes and they go, oh, here we go, RPG with the tinfoil... Oh, he's... No, like, people people really don't understand how deep this goes. It would, it would blow their minds to see... And all these streams of Judas, Judas acts like, oh, 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 I just, I just, he's Judas, I just, he's, like, he just acts like he's, like, this, uh, this, like, totally, like, defenseless, oh, I just, yeah, like, like, the guy, you wouldn't believe how much of a fucking snake scumbag this guy gets behind the scenes, you wouldn't believe who he's worked with on this, this fail, this eternally fail, bro. I know you're listening right now. You will never, ever, in your if you spend every second for the rest of your life trying to stop Nick, you will never, ever, ever achieve that mission. So at this point, it's a grift. He knows that it's a grift, but that's what his audience pays it to see. Just like, just like my audience, that's what they would pay me to see. They wanted sure. to tune into my stream, and they wanted that confirmation, reassurance. They wanted me to say, guys, Nick is losing. By the way, by the way, you know, because another thing I got accused of is, oh, you were just lying for two years. Uh, no, I wasn't. Now, there were certain things that I did lie about. For example, like the, the Mr. Krabs thing. That was probably the biggest one. Now, the reason why I chose to lie about that is because... At the time when I was fighting with Nick, the Gorgeous America First, they were doing a lot of nasty things to me. They were spreading a lot of nasty lies about me. So, like that, that's the thing. That's how it goes. When two people are feuding, they're not both sides are completely 100% on the team. And then people act like, oh my God, do you hear this? Oh my God, he said he lied. Yeah, they lied about me. They called me a Jewish fed. And in response, I pushed the Mr. Krabs thing. Now, in my defense, I actually thought... Mr. Krabs, at first, I thought it was legit, and I even, uh, I even, you know, consulted somebody who I, who I thought I could trust at the time, Nuke Telly, who goes by, uh, what's his name now, like, Wu Kang Flu or something like that, yeah, on, on yeah, yeah. X. He's definitely afraid way, of Groypers, by the way. Even on the other side, at first, I thought it was real. Um, because I was like, I don't know, this looks bad, da, da, da. and then, of course, it got debunked. Um, you know, we... We debunked it basically when I was on the other team, uh, but um, yeah, at first even I was like, I don't know, maybe there is uh, something here. Uh, so yeah, I was in your same camp. I mean, I think out of all the ops ever pulled on Nick, I think that was the one that most people fell for because it looked like something. Not even the porn part, but it looked like something that Nick, you know, because he he was doing at the time. He was doing screen records yes. there's the Kanye music so like you know credit I mean I don't want to say credit because I'm not trying to I'm not trying to uh, you know um, like compliment whoever did this but out of all the ops that any uh, and this wasn't even an A-log actually who, who did that it wasn't even an A-log so it's funny because all the all the A-loggery as P.O. Shea the now permanently bad faggot um, you know <laughs> once put it he said I think that he's uh what did he say? Something about being like an expert, an expert uh, in a loggery. No, it was, but, uh, what was the quote? It was um, yeah, yeah, it's you all know about the a logging for him. It's not, it's not about the content. It's not about he, he's like the, the professional a log or whatever. Like it's not all, anymore. A log, not anymore. No, he isn't. That's right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's and that's psychotic. But I mean, honestly, uh, like that's your life. Um, you're. No, the guy, the guy is funny because it's yeah, he's an ab absolute total loser. Everything they say about me, everything they say about you, it's total projection. You, you're absolutely killing it. Me, not going to get into uh, what I'm personally up to. I would love to, by the way. I would love to, but you can't because you, can't. you, you know no, no. why yes. I can't. Because but, anything um, good in your life, they'll try to ruin it. That's exactly. why you can't. And so exactly. I know. Yes. I know. I can. And it's a shame. It's a shame too because when you're a streamer, when you're a content creator, like you want. You know, part of the joy of being a streamer is sharing your life with yes. your audience, like with the people out there who don't hate your fucking guts for no reason. 
So, you know, really it's a shame that it's gotten to the point for me where I can't even, I can't even share, you know, just like basic, I don't know, basic moments of my life with the people who actually, you know, do support me because anything I put out there, like you just said, they're going to, they're going to come after it. They're going to try to destroy it. Um, but, um, I think I was talking about Judas there, right? But you know what it is? There's like a thousand different things that I'm trying to get off my chest right now because it's been like almost an entire year since I streamed. So I'm sorry if I'm all over the place, but I'm just trying to hit like all the points. No, keep it. Um, uh, I think. Oh, so Judas, I was saying how um, Judas is a complete. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're talking about Judas is a complete failure at life. And the thing is, as you know, Judas, he's going to. He's going to do a stream, obviously, in response to this, and he's going to puff his chest out. And he's like, a, yeah, he's a big, tough guy, bro. We all saw you jittering, jittering, Judy, before the homosexual. You were confronted by a literal cocksucking homosexual, and you were trembling. We all saw that hand shaking. The guy was, he was convulsing. Then, even in a voice chat, not even face to face, but in a voice chat with Nick, absolutely. Then I got him out. on. I got it. Yes, him on. yes, yes. He wouldn't you have gone on without me. My audience forced uh, me on the show. I wouldn't have even got on if the <laughs> audience hadn't forced me on just through sheer spammery. Uh, and they got me on, and then he was in my DMs, and he's like, hey, get me on, get me on, get me on. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, well, this was Nick's number two for years. He's been bitching about him for a year straight. Uh, if anybody, could, you know, he knows everything, he must have all the dirt, right? He must be ready for this moment, right? This is what he's been waiting for, right? So I'm sitting here thinking all right here's your chance and i got him on and he got absolutely destroyed in the worst blood sports performance i've ever seen and this is not hyperbole he was quivering like a bitch it sounded like he was having flashbacks to when nick used to slap him around in private i'm literally he sounded like an abused spouse uh and not to make it a gay thing but that's how he sounded right like uh like the the old number two who used to always get bitched out right uh that's what he sounded like he was just quivering and just had no answers for anything and just got blown the fuck out and that's the thing you were you were setting him up for the moment for, of his for the win. career for the yes. win. i set him up for the biggest moment of his career yes yes and that that without exaggeration was supposed to be the biggest moment of his because because there's nothing in this guy's future all he's going to do what what comes after nick what comes next nothing this is what the audience that he has, this is what they pay him for. And sure, it's actually kind of interesting, I think, for some people to probably hear my perspective on, you know, how I was um, how I was going about my streams towards the end when it became blatantly obvious that Nick had won. Because that's what Judas is this is what everybody needs to understand. That's what Judas is doing right now. Every night before, and that's why he barely streams anymore. By the way, Judas, I don't watch your streams. I not watch literal and I know they're gonna say cap. Literally I've not watched one single second of any of your streams since I stopped streaming because why the fuck in the world would I ever waste my time doing such a thing? Never happened. Now, I do have people, you know, obviously people tell me, oh, this person sure. said this, sure. this person said that. And that's the only way, that, that's the only reason why I know anything at all that's going on, because otherwise I'm working like 24-7, seven, seven days a week. I'm working around the clock, and, you know, so when, when I do hop on Twitter, you know, I take little breaks, five, ten-minute breaks here and there, and people tell me, oh, this is, you know, what's going on here. So that's the only reason why I know at all um, uh, well, he's happened. obsessed about you, and I see New Age in chat. Uh, a friend of mine, he says, Jaden mentions you almost every single stream uh, to this day. And for people who don't know, you know, we talked about your own allies snaking you uh, and basically running you off uh, and fucking with you in every way and sending people to your house uh, and all this and that. For people who don't know, you were doing all the heavy lifting uh, as yes. far as going at America First and going through all these long streams and finding all these clips. Uh, and you I were like, the only you one were making the clips. You were the content machine is what you were. Uh, uh, and they were too lazy to do any of that. You were basically the brains behind the operation. Hundred percent. That is exactly the way it went down. Like I was doing all the heavy lifting in the beginning. You know, in the very beginning, I would go to Kiwi Farms for tips and information. But then it got to the point where Kiwi Farm, like the the whole the whole Nick Forum, it just it, told, it became a ghost town. And 
they weren't posting anything anymore. So it's like, okay, well, if I can't get the clips from there anymore, then I guess I'm going to have to do the legwork myself. So then I started, you know, I started watching all the shows. I started making all the clips. You know, a bunch of my clips went were, were spread around, went viral. Um, Judas, I don't think Judas has ever made a clip once in his life. Asher Parks, Asher Parks doesn't know how to operate OBS still. After, like, how many years of streaming, doesn't know how to operate OBS. Well, they can't walk either. either. So, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. We can't even stay <laughs> So OBS, forget about that. That's, that's obviously an impossibility for him. But, um... Yeah, no, it's true that I was the one doing all the heavy lifting, and, and I also think that was a big part of it, at least for Ashton Parks of the Kino Casino. I think that was a big part of it, because I think he saw, like, the recognition and attention that I was starting to get. He saw his, his absolute idol and hero, Medicare, in my chats. Medicare was super chatting me. So I think, you know, Ashton Parks has burnt every bridge he's ever he's ever established with anybody. The guy is just a total uh, a fucking vile scumbag. Um, he can't maintain friendships with anybody. Everybody saw what he did to serve. Everybody saw what what well, he's done to everybody. It's actually if if, if Worski wasn't a total fucking moron, it would have already happened to him too. But, it will, um, by the way. But... It will, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, the thing is, until he can find somebody else to press on an OBS, uh, Tarski is going to be, you know, he's going to have some some usefulness up until that moment. But um, yeah, so with Kino Casino. Or Ashton Parks specifically. I think and he's the one who got the call, and Worski admitted this on air, and we played the clip that Gabe Hoffman literally gave him the order to go yes. after you. And we played the clip, and Worski's dumbass admitted it on air, and then Ashton's immediately trying to shut him up, but it was too late. Uh, and he admitted that Hoffman set them on you through Ashton yes. Parks. He admitted that on yes. air. Worski admitted that. Yes, that's a fact. Um, you've exposed it. I've exposed it. We have the clip. It's absolutely irrefutable. Worski on tape admitting that the reason why they attacked me in the first place is because Dave Hoffman told him to do so. This is not a made-up conspiracy theory. This is not me. Oh, sure. out. That's actually what happened. And why do all these people, by the way, why do they all run cover for that? You know, once again, we were allies. We were this triumvirate. We were going to take down America first. Why is everybody in the sector okay with the fact that Kino Casino, they launched this attack on me totally unprovoked? Well, actually, so let, let's, let's, let's speak on that for a second. Because the retcon that Ashton Parks came up with to justify everything they did to me in the subsequent months following that incident... Ashton Parks claims the reason why they played that clip isn't because Gabe Hoffman told them to do so, even though we have it on tape, that that's the reason why yes. they did it. So this is this is bullshit. But he claims the reason why they did that to me was because I was I was attacking them, the cry bully says. He says that I was attacking them and I was I was making all these comments about them and I was criticizing them. This could not be further from the truth. And I'm embarrassed and ashamed to admit it because it's actually pathetic that I would ever defend such loathsome people. But here's the reality of how things went down. At the time, Kino Casino was declining massively from its former glory days. Because in the beginning, got to give them some credit, right? In the beginning, yes. they did have some big shows. Sure. They did have some big episodes. They were getting views. They were getting big, big donations in the beginning, yeah. right? But then, after that early success, clearly, it got to their heads. And from that point on, they were just on cruise control. And they were missed. They were canceling show after show after show, right? They just kept canceling shows. They kept making excuses. You know, Worski would always say, oh, we're working on this big super show, guys. The reason why we're canceling tonight's show is because we're watching on this super episode. We're working on the super episode of the casino. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be, you know, doing the production for that. Those episodes never, ever came. I think when they finally did do a, a special episode of the Kino Casino, it was asking and Worski shirtless getting drunk. That, that, <laughs> that, was, the special that was the special episode of Kino Casino that everybody was, was you know, anticipating for months. And that was the reason why they had to cancel 20 shows in like a two-month span so that they could get drunk and, and eat pizza shirtless together. So... Their, their star was obviously declining, 
And like I said multiple times now, there was like this triumvirate between me, Judas, Kino Casino. So there was a lot of overlap between our audiences, right? People yes. would watch me, and then they would watch Judas, and then they would watch the Kino Casino. And I was kind of like, I was the smallest of the three. So if uh, Kino Casino was live and people would go watch them instead, that's just the way it works, right? Yes. So, but Kino Casino, they were canceling almost every show. They were canceling week after week, day after day. So what happened was people would often come into my chat, people that were regular viewers, but also viewers of their show, would come into my chat and they would say, they would voice their uh, disappointment in the Kino Casino with me. And if you could find any of this footage, I doubt, I doubt, you know, that they'll put it out there because it exonerates me. But if you could find any of this footage, whenever I would respond to this, I would always take like this, um, you know, uh, give them the benefit of the doubt approach. Or I'd say, oh, well, guys, you know, oh, remember that? They said they're working on that special episode. And so I would always come because that's what you're supposed to do when you are friendly with somebody, when you're allied with someone, right? Like you don't say, yeah, yeah, they're really, uh, you know, they're really um, blowing this off. No, you, you come up with you excuses. Can't try you can't defend them. They're supposed to be on your team, right? Yeah, I, I'm the same way, right? Like, you know, you're not going to throw them under the bus, right? Right, it's a totally normal thing. So, you know, but the thing is, it was so apparent that they were slacking off that what I would do, and by the way, I did not even know that they were, like, watching my streams at the time. I, I didn't know that they were listening to what I was saying. Apparently, they were. But I wasn't talking shit ever. All I did was I came up with excuses, and they said, yeah, well, maybe. You know, it was gentle, very light, constructive criticism at worst. And the reason why I gave that gentle, light, and tough criticism is because I wanted to see them return to their former glory days. It was true, it was undeniably true, that the show was declining. You know, it's like, it's like if you watch a television show, and the first three seasons, the first two seasons are great, but then season three isn't so good. You might not abandon right. it right away. You might say, oh, well, you know, you might come up with some cope or some rationalization for why season three is so good, but maybe season four will be better. Right. That's essentially all I ever said about the Kino Casino. And Ashton, what he says is he says, oh, well, the reason why I doxed the fuck out of him, which, which incited huge amounts of harassment that I've been dealing with for the last year against me, the reason why that was justified is because I attacked him first. Fuck you. That is a total, it is a blatant lie. They never produced evidence. They never will produce evidence because it didn't fucking happen. But, you know, unfortunately, what ended up happening in the end is the people with the, the biggest microphones were the ones who, who won because, you know, they had control of the narrative. I mean, it, it's just a simple matter of numbers, right? Like, they yes. had a bigger audience than they had. And Kato Gay helped lead the way, me. by the way, uh, on Twitter with a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, keep going. Right, right, yeah. So there's this collaborative effort by these accounts with bigger followings in group than mine. Chats, and they sit around, and they spin these narratives. Yeah, go ahead. Right, right, exactly. And that's what happened. And a lot of people don't realize that that's what happened. A lot of people don't care that that's what happened. And, um, you know, like I said at the very beginning, it's just, it's mind-blowing to me when I see what people say happened say. versus what I know happened because I experienced it firsthand. It's just like, it's literally, it couldn't be more disconnected. So, um, you know, that's why I'm calling it to the stream today because um, getting... Kino Shay, Kino. I actually call him Kino Faggot, even though it doesn't make sense. I just, I just <laughs> like calling him a faggot because that's what he is. So, like, I'm always, always referring to him as Kino Faggot. Um, but that's why I'm calling in because I wasn't planning on on doing an appearance on any stream until I was, you know, fully. Because sure. you know, like once you put yourself out there, you're kind of inviting some, uh, you know, uh, some some bullshit. So I just thought I, today was the perfect day. We knew is. we were going to do it. We talked about doing it, but I was like, today's the day. We have over 600 live here just on Rumble alone watching this. Uh, so I think I think it was the right call. Um, I want to read some of these comments to you, and we'll get back to the to the story here. Sure, uh, man, but, sure. But uh, there's been some sent in. First off, Dragoon, this play, but it says Ralph won, RPG won. Uh, Austin A. Bear says, I've been I have been finding it strange that RPG has been MIA for about a year, but I still see comments about him daily from the Spurgs, and then he says deranged. Uh, what real do you quick, think real about quick, that? Real quick. Yeah. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So real quick, I actually like to comment on that because 
um, it's a it's a great point to bring up. The reason why they are now focusing all of their uh, energy and attention on me is because they know they can't stop Nick. Because that was the original objective, right? They were going to stop Nick. They were going to stop America first. But e- even and they'll never admit this. They will never say this out loud or or you know openly. But the reason why they're because the thing is is for me. You know, I don't have the following Nick does. I don't have the influence Nick does. So uh, for them, I'm low-hanging fruit, you know? Yeah. Like, they can all gang up on me. It's very easy for them to do so. I, I, And then that's really all it is, is, you know, it makes them feel like they're accomplishing something. Like, they all successfully were able to smear my reputation. They were successfully able to get me to stop streaming, right? They couldn't do that with Nick, which like actually would be achieving something of importance. Because like let's just be honest, I was never I was never gonna be a breakout star in the uh in, in the streaming industry. Like that was never gonna happen. I gave it a shot, right? I didn't know how things would go, but it just was never gonna happen. And that's why, you know, in a way, I know people will say this is cope. But in a way, it's kind of a good thing that things turned out the way that they did because it pushed me. It put it basically it pushed me forward in life, and it gave me the opportunity to move on to something else that is, you know, far more uh, fruitful and and better off for me. So, you know, I gave it a shot, and it just it didn't work, and that's okay. I mean, I. Most people who try to get into streaming, they fail. <laughs> it, it, it's hard. Yeah. It's, it's a lot harder than people realize. And that's why, actually, I have a lot of uh, respect for what you do because, like, honestly, you're you're very, very good and you're extremely talented. It, like, people don't realize how hard it is to do what you're doing. It's actually, like, because the thing is, is you're not, like, the biggest streamer in the world, right? No. But you're still, you're pulling these huge desks. You're hosting these panels. You're hosting these debates. Like, you're just a, you're a content machine. People don't, you know, because it's like, it's not, it's not labor. It's not, like, construction. People don't realize how, and, and actually, I think, uh, I think Hassan made a comment about this recently where he was talking about sort of, like, how mentally taxing streaming yeah, is. Yeah, he got like dragged for it because he went a little too yes. far with the point, but... The point he was making, um, now he went too far by saying it's harder than a, you know, a regular job and all this and that. Uh, I don't really agree with that. I mean, manual labor, et cetera, definitely that's harder and more taxing. But people don't un- understand that it is draining to come out here and talk for eight hours a day, right? Uh, it is um, draining to have your whole personal life out there on display and people attacking you from every direction. Uh, and it's a unique job that most normal people can't really understand. They can, and because they can't relate to it, when they hear, like, you and me discussing this right now, like, they're rolling their yeah, eyes, they're they like, oh, how ridiculous, yes. and they're they're never going to get it, and that's not me saying, oh, we're better than them, because they're not going to get it, but because they don't have direct experience with it, they're just never going to relate, and they're going to say, oh, what a joke, you know, cry me a river, but the reality is, is that streaming is actually, it's not, it's not physical labor, but there's a lot more that goes into it that people realize than meets the eye. And to do it day after day after day for hours on end the way that you do it, like, you're an absolute fucking machine. You're killing it. And that's honestly a, a big part of the reason why, honestly, you're another one they tried to stop and they've completely failed to do so, just like yes. Nick. Yes, they tried to and ruin me. I mean, it drives me fucking in insane. Every way possible. Um, and um, I had a I had a point I was going to make there, and I and I forgot because I just want to let you uh, go off on it. But it, it is deranged. Uh, Austin A. Bear was right. Um, Daniel Larson Than said uh, Rico, both PPP and Andy Worski and Kinoche Criminal Enterprise. Uh, it was a conspiracy <laughs> type deal, uh, literally. Uh, Anonymous says fat ass and the baby killer have scarcity mentality problems. Uh, I would agree with that as well. Uh, Definitely. And um, Daniel Larson. Real quick, real quick, can I comment on that? Sure. So so the thing is, is the way I always viewed the situation between me, Judas, and Kino Casino, I thought, because the sector isn't very large, but at the same time, I think that there is enough to go around. You know, like everybody can eat at the end of the day. You know, there's enough of an audience out there. Like, it's not like, like that was the way I viewed it. I viewed it that we could all 
we could all share and everybody would be fine. And I never viewed, you know, either Judas or Kino Casino with animosity. There was never any envy there. It's not like, oh, they have more viewers than me. And like, that was upset. No, like I was a, a total team player. And um, yeah, so, but but the thing with, with Ashton, Ashton is the complete opposite where he's a, a deeply jealous, deeply envious person. And uh, the guy, he's, he's a real fucking mess. He's, 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 he is, um, he's got a lot of problems, but at the same time, it's hard to feel bad for somebody who has a lot of problems when they do the things that he has done. Um, so, you know, he'll get his, I don't even have to, you know, I don't have to clap back. I don't have to do shit. He'll get his just the way that Pete O'Shea got his too. So all, all these people will, all these people will. They will. I agree with that. Uh, and it's going to be a beautiful day. And I see Daniel Larson saying, by the way, send in any more questions, anything else. Uh, Daniel Larson said, 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 Ted, thoughts on big tech? Uh, complete and total faggot. Wife Peter, proven wife Peter. I'm not going to say anything else. He's, he's a total bitch. <laughs> I think that was very I think that was very succinct. Uh <laughs> I mean the guy okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a little bit more. The guy, like you know what, fuck it, fuck him. Not important. Fair okay. enough, and that's kind of the stance I took because he thrives on any type of uh, attention, uh and so that's why I ignore him myself. But um now so Akina Shea himself, that's what got you to, to call in today. Yes, uh, yes. Getting him kicked off. Uh, what a glorious day. What an what a absolutely glorious day. Um, what, were your, what, were, what was your initial reaction when you got the email that they took him out? Um, well, so real quick, before I get to that, I was just kind of sure. like covered the way it went down. Okay, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Um, well, the way it went down with, uh, with Akina Shea fan. So what happened was, you know, yesterday I was – in the middle of something and like, I was just not online, um, at all, but, um, you know, my phone, my phone lights up. I see, uh, you know, Ethan Ralph in the DMS and I'm like, I gotta, it's Ethan Ralph. You gotta respond to that. So, <laughs> so I take a look and, um, and by the way, this is not me snitching on you. This is me giving, like, I, I want you, I want you to have credit for this. I, I want like both of us to like hold this trophy up high and, and claim this Jack and as Kobe ours. Baby. Yep, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. So, um, yeah. So you hit me up and you let me know. Hey, by the way, you could report. You could possibly, um, you know, report this for impersonation. And I, as soon as I saw that, boom, I, I took action immediately because you know I'm thinking. You, you, you don't want too much time to pass. Maybe he'll realize that he's in violation of the rules. Maybe he'll actually add parody to his name, which he didn't do. Didn't add it to his name. Didn't add it to the bio. And as Ralph pointed out, even if he did add it to the bio, it still wouldn't have mattered because it's got to be in the name. Right. So as soon as I saw that DM, leapt into action. And, uh, you know, I sent Twitter my government identification. They were immediately able to detect that this account was fraudulent that Kinoche was indeed impersonating me and they uh they blew him the fuck out and he lost the mo like I can you imagine what he's going through right oh, now? Oh it's not it is not an exaggeration. Oh. No, it's not an exaggeration oh. at all. Like right now I'm honestly I'm surprised not that I wanted to do this TOS, but I'm surprised he hasn't blown his brains out yet. Like this is without joke or exaggeration the the most important, the only thing in his life, the only thing that he has in his favela down in South America. This is it. This is it. There's, there's nothing else. He is fucking ruined right now. And, and the best part of all, you want to talk about poetic justice, you and me, Caesar and Ralph, we are the ones, you, of, of all the people. Of all of his enemies, you and me, like, this is like a total and absolute nightmare for him that you and me together are the ones who took him out. Like, let, let, let the, the, uh, the history books of the sector, let it be known that Ethan Ralph and Teddy Feaser, we are the ones who took him out. It's God, just, that feels great it's, to say. It's poetic justice. It really is. It is. It's poetic justice. It couldn't be more perfect. 
and like like you with the alley oop, me with the slam dunk. <laughs> exactly. Like, Bring in the backboard. <laughs> <laughs> Old school 90s style when the backboard just actually break. Yeah, that's right. NBA jam, backboard breaking on that bitch. Uh, also, there's another super chat coming in. Send fifty dollars. Right. Oh seven RPG. Hold on. Yeah, by the way, guys, get those super chats in. Get them in. You got it. You got us. Ralph was the only person in the sector who could get me to do a stream today. So you got to support this man. Get those super and chats. Thank in. you. And I'll and I'll, first off, Clutch sent this in, and then I'll play that one over the top since it was a. 50 spot. Um, uh, Clutch says, I, I think I know the answer to this, but would you e ever be willing to squash the beef uh, with Big Tech? I think I know the answer already uh, there, but uh, you can answer that if you'd like. The thing with Big Tech is I already tried to squash it, so we had beef. The way our relationship started with Big Tech was beef. That's how it started. Then we reconciled, or so I thought, but the guy is such a humongous dickhead and cocksucker that he decided to, uh, you know, gang up with the faggots, and, you know, he was one of the many who, who dogpiled and bandwagoned against me. So, the thing is, is it's like, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I already got fooled once with him, I will not get fooled twice, and uh, Mike Lowry, which is his real name, by the way, Mike yes. Lowry can go fuck himself. Because there was, the thing, the thing with him is, we were cool, like, we, like you and me, right? We had beef, we made amends, things are cool with us, and I don't see that changing. With Big Tech Mike Lowry, things were cool, I thought we were good, and then all of a sudden, he, you know, like everybody else, he decides to snake, he wanted to, you know, he, he wanted to, he wanted to snake, he wanted to be a turn. He might be the so biggest now, snake around, actually, because I made up with him he's twice, up there. Uh, maybe other than Judas, uh, but, like, he is definitely up there because the same thing happened to me. I made up with him twice, uh, and then when it's convenient or he feels like there's an opening, uh, he just totally switches up, uh, and that's why I would never make amends with him either because he's a snake. He, he's a weird he's guy. Man. He's, like, addicted to destroying, like, he has like a pathological inclination to like I I, I think he likes the chaos. Yeah. Like so I, I think even if it even if it results in um like the destruction of, of a relationship or a friendship, I think that he prefers the chaos to that like I I don't know, like the stability of a, of a friendship with somebody. I, I don't know. I don't know. But that, that's the impression that I he's get. Got some, no, he's got some mental problems. I'll play this over the sure. top and, and just wait one second because of 50 spot. Sure. Uh, and thank you for that, Anonymous. Anonymous sent $50 07 RPG. Much respect and good to hear you on talk about this on stream after all this time. Only on the kill stream, baby. Godspeed. He's, and I'll read it to you. He said, 07 RPG, much respect, and good to hear you talk about this, all, about all this on the stream. On this stream. All about this on stream uh -huh. after all this time. Only on the kill stream, baby. Godspeed. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for that. If you have any more questions, uh, send those in. Uh, and I'm trying to... Um, I'm trying to think of some stuff um, that we might not have, have covered, but uh, I wanted to talk about them actually um, sending some, that guy to your house uh, um, and taking it to that level. Uh, and they did the same thing to me, by the way, uh, which is one reason I moved to Mexico. They don't do that now. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, they actually sent somebody uh, to, your, to your house uh, to fuck with you, like that was the level of of fuckery they were like on, the and they played it on their show and run. celebrated it like Is it was video some some great thing. Topic? By the way, um, uh, yeah, talk about yeah, that. no, that's something else. That's something else. It's a great uh, great point to touch on because. You know, one thing that uh, they said a lot over the last year is, oh, it's just jokes, we're just laughing online, ha ha, he he, oh, RPG can't take a joke. And the thing about that, the point that I always make with they, because I can take a joke, That's I laugh at myself kind of all person. the time, I get it, I'm a fucking goofy, silly person. So it's like, I'm not, like, that. I'm not oblivious to that. I know who I am, I'm cool with who I am, and like, these people, you know, they're, they're, attacking me with all this bullshit they think that oh he can't take a joke god went in when i was warring with america first you know, i was in got a cozy channel and he did several streams where he ruthlessly it was ruthlessly ruthless. attacked yeah. it was ruthless 
And I can admit, I can admit that it was ruthless that he was tearing me apart. Now, like ninety percent of what he said wasn't true. That's it doesn't true, matter. That's always got to be Right. Yeah. yeah, like it was almost entirely false. But it doesn't matter because, like, people don't know what the truth is, and they just assume that he's telling the truth, like they do with the Keanu Casino. They just assume because it's they just assume it's true. Uh, they don't know the other side of the story. And stands and, five dollars on Rumble. But a- after that happened. You know, at first I said absolutely nothing about it because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to give it any attention at all, even though I was aware that that had happened. But then, um, oh, but then it became a thing. This was actually pushed by one of the A logs. It became a thing where they wanted me to fight Don Winston. Like yes, it became yes, a yes. retarded, retarded meme where they were like, fight Don Winston, fight Don Winston. And then they were pretending that I was afraid to fight Don Winston, which I'm not. And I don't know where Gobson stands on me, so I'm not going to talk shit. But um, I would not be afraid to fight Dallas. It, it never had anything to do. It, 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 it wasn't serious. That was never going to happen anyway. Yeah, right, like, what's right. Yeah, yeah, that was right. Just... So like, I was ignoring it because it was obviously never going to happen. And then they were like, oh, you're a pussy. You're, you're afraid to fight Dallas because I was ignoring it. And they were pushing it a lot and a lot. So eventually I responded on stream and... Uh, basically, what my response was to the Godwin's dreams is I said that they were funny and that they genuinely made me laugh, and they did. Like I actually, I actually did think it was funny because I, I can't really take Godwin's in very seriously. The guy's a total clown to me, you know. So, but, but 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 to his credit, to his credit, he actually is funny during his dreams, even when he was attacking me. There were shit he said where I was like, ha, "That's that's absurd. That's ridiculous." So, you know. That was my I response. Said the same thing too. About him. Now he said some things about me since that I can't really uh, get past, probably. Uh, but I told him before, even when you know he was out talking shit about me, I would be sitting there laughing at some of this. Most of the stuff I don't even wouldn't even watch, but I would watch his stuff because it was actually funny, even though it was ridiculous and untrue. Uh, but right. he was doing it in a, like a showman way, right? In a funny yes, way, exactly. like performance. Uh, and so yeah, I said the same thing about him myself. Exactly. It was comical. Like it, it was, it was comically absurd the things that he was saying about me to the point where even I found it funny. So the point in saying this is, God would say he did two or three streams, or he, you know, dug into me real hard. And my response to that was that I thought it was funny, which I did think it was funny. Then, you know, shortly, I don't know, a month or two later, the shit went down with the Kino Casino. And they were like, oh, you can't take a joke. You can't take a joke. Once again, the difference is, is Godwinson at the time was an enemy of mine. So for Godwinson to do a stream like that, it's like, well, that makes sense. Because the guy's an enemy of mine. So, he, you know, he's trying to tear down one of his enemies. And he was he was sweeping for Nick at the time. So that's why he did that. But, you know, Casino, why did they do it? Judas, why did he do it? Big Tech Mike Lowry. Why did he do it? Porcelain, Adam Bailey. Why did, you know, the list goes on. Why did all of these people, and I could, I could have a long list that I could go through. All these people, Let's one go by down. one. I, I, you know what it is? Is I stopped the list there because I don't want to give most of them uh, recognition. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But I do want to ask you about porcelain specifically, and I will do that uh, here in a second. But I want to read a couple more of these out. Corn, sure, Pop, sure. Corn Pop says, and can we hit the goal? That'll be 36 straight Let's shows in go. a row if we hit the goal today. And by God, we're bringing the heat today. RPG making his long-awaited return. You don't know how many times people have asked me uh, to get you on the show. Uh, and the, and they, I, I don't think I've said it publicly, but we We'd agree that, uh, you know, I think you were going to do your comeback first, actually, and then come on my show. That was the original plan, yes. yeah. But then I was going to get the, like, exclusive first uh, interview or whatever. Yes. So it just worked out this way because Kina Gay got banned. And I said, hey, man, today's the day, right? Like, this is this We is have it. to do it. We, we, have have, we had to do it today. Uh, uh, Corn Pop, the bad dude, says, is there a video I can watch to catch up on the topic I'm behind? I don't know if oh, one specifically, <laughs> but... Uh, if you find any videos, bullshit, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, basically, what you're saying. If you find any videos on the topic, uh, be warned. You're not gonna. You're gonna get the uh, Kino Casino version right. of events. So, just yeah. uh, be warned. Yeah, that's what I think as well. Um, Daniel Larson Stan says, "You never know what will happen on the kill stream. You never do. You never oh, do." Oh, fucking true. Also, <laughs> I got a I got a super chat in uh, from killstream.live slash tip, and he said, "Do you have any thoughts on jobless Jonathan Harrison, who is is known as Cog? Uh, <laughs> do you have any any thoughts on him?" Yeah, I'll comment on him quick. So the thing with Cog is I really never had uh, too many thoughts about him. Like throughout my entire Most career, which I was crazy yeah. to say, yeah, yeah. yeah. as uh, as an A log, 
Um, the guy was just never on my radar. He was never very relevant to me. I know that people in my some people in my audience, very few, um, did actually watch his streams, but like he just never seemed relevant enough to pay attention to. So I never really knew that much about him. But um, then what happened? Something happened, and then I called into his stream. Uh, shit, I actually. Happened, Dungeon I Doors. Just, uh, I hear the donation thing going on. Is go that, ahead. Is that no, go right ahead. Now? I'll play. Uh, Keep with your story, and I'll play. Thank you, Waffen. Okay. I'll ask that question. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I think this was. I'm kind of forgetting why. For some reason, I called into a stream. This might. I really can't remember. Maybe somebody in the chat can, can help me. But anyway, anyway, I called into a stream, and um, this was the first time we ever interacted with each other at all. And we had what I thought was a, you know, a good and, uh, you know, jovial conversation with one another. So, you know, um, from that point, I thought, okay, you know, he seems all right. And then, like, I don't know, three days later, he was on the bandwagon with all the all the faggots, and he was, you know, spreading all the, the lies and smears. So I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Like, like, I, it, so it's another situation where you think you're cool with somebody, and then they just, like, stab you in the back five seconds later because they're all fucking scumbags. And, um, yeah, so I never really thought much about him. We had a conversation. I thought we were civil with one another, and then he just, like, flipped three days later. That's the story there. Yeah, common story uh, with him. I, I, I think you saw what I what I did to him over the last uh, month or two. And uh, oh yeah, you uh, can absolutely you can absolutely drag him for the meat grinder. And I do have to say, when it comes to all that, like I'm not super closely paying attention to it, sure. but I do see it in the timeline. Obviously, you know, I have seen those um, ghastly images of his wife, and <laughs> I, you know. I, I have to say, you know, fuck you, Cog. Like, you wanted to uh, join the bandwagon. You got all of these people, man. All of these people, when they get their just desserts, I am lapping it up. I am lapping up the just desserts because all of them deserve it. Because um, I never did anything wrong to any of these people. It's, it's not in my nature. It's not the kind of guy I am. I will never be the first to turn. I will never be the first to flip. If you respect me, if you do right by me, I do right by you. That is my code. That is my, you know, my, my ethical code. That's how I operate. So, um, yeah. So when I see these things happen to these people who came for me for literally no fucking reason, um, you got what you fucking deserve. 700 live here, just on Rumble alone, on the kill stream, RPGs return. Um, let me ask you about porcelain. Uh, also, Waffen sent in a Korean street food video. I may put that on in the background, but I can't play the sound, Waffens, because this is like uh, a big exclusive. It'd be kind of weird to have it on in the background, <laughs> but maybe I will. Um, <laughs> maybe I will do that. And thank you, Waffens. Good to see you. Um, but, um, uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on, on porcelain? Yes. Dixie was sure. So, how did that even uh, start? Uh, so this was this was the second stream that the Kino Casino did attacking me. This was the day when they started to name dox me, and um, basically they were like encouraging everybody in their chat to you know also spam my name dox, and they were having uh, the time of their lives just spamming the fuck out of my name, making sure it was as public and known as possible. Which, you know, as you can imagine, I did not find extremely amusing because the thing about putting someone's name out there is pretty fucking obvious. But, like, if you put someone's name out there, that's the key to everything else. Yes. So some people, some people, some of these aides might say, oh, it's just your name, what's the big deal? Yeah, the name literally leads to every other piece of information about a person, especially when your name isn't Mike Jones. When your name is a, <laughs> it's uh, just Garrett. pretty unique. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. when your name is pretty unique. It, it leads to everything else, and it has, as everybody has seen by now. So that's the reason why I, quote, unquote, overreacted. But anyway, so I did not watch that stream live. I don't know. Maybe I watched some of the replay. Um, but I saw in the chat none other than Porcelain, uh, real name Adam Daly. That is his real name, Adam Daly. And I'm repeating it because he says it's very funny when you when you uh, put someone's name out there. So that's what I'm doing. Adam Daly Porcelain. He was in the chat. And once again, well, I've been playing the same thing over and over now. But with Adam Daly, it's a society that I thought that I was cool with, that I thought that I was friendly with, that I thought that I was, you know, like, these people that you just would never expect them to to be so treacherous, to be such snakes. Um, 
you know, let me give an example. So let's say, let's say, like, you know, at the time I was in the gay log, let's say Nick was doing a stream where Nick was doxing Horseman, Adam Daly, right? And, and he was getting his entire chat to say, Adam Daly, Adam Daly, Adam Daly, right? My response, my reaction to that would not be to hop into chat and join all the others in spamming his name, because that would not be a friendly or kind action. I should not have to explain any of this to anybody, but with all the gaslighting out there, apparently I do, so I will. Right, so that would not be a friendly thing to do, especially since everybody knows how important anonymity is in this sphere. Everybody knows that. Everybody understands it. Anonymity, super important, especially when you're political and especially, you know, when you're conservative, when you're a dissident, when you're racist, when you're sexist, when you're all these things. Anonymity, pretty important. So knowing how important that is, knowing how important Adam Daly's anonymity is to him, I would not join the, the, the choir and I would not be in the chat going, <laughs> Adam Daly, <laughs> Adam Daly. But this is exactly what he was doing in the Kino Casino chat while Ashley Parkson and Andy Perez, while they were name doxing the fuck out of me. He was one of the many who I saw in the chat. And when I saw that, I was like, well, that's pretty fucked up, man. Because, like, you, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. don't you know how, like I just said, how serious it is to put someone like you would think especially him he has a lot of enemies he's made a lot of enemies over the years with his with his videos with his documentaries sure. he has a lot of people who are gunning for him so you would think that he understands better than most how how you know how i'm taking that situation but he had no regard at all for what i was dealing with in that moment so what did he do like the rest of them, he joined in, and he was spamming my name in the chat. <laughs> spamming my name in the chat. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, you want to spam my name in the chat? He ID'd him, and I, and I went berserk on him. You know, he thinks that's like an O, and I fucking went berserk on him. I read that shit on stream. I wasn't embarrassed. I didn't try to hide it. I went nuclear on him, and I will... I'll, I don't know if I could find the transcript. I'll read it again. Like, I, I, don't, I don't give two shit. Because the thing is, with the sectorites, you know, if you get upset, they go, oh, you got upset. Oh, you got upset. And we're just laughing. But they're not just laughing. And we saw that today uh, on Kiwi Farms with Kissel Pedos. Did Kissel Pedos sound like he was laughing no. on Kiwi Farms today? It sounded he like, sounded the, like the tears were running down his face while he was typing, <laughs> dripping down onto the keyboard because his daddy, Kino Gay, got banned off Twitter. Oh, and they want us all doxxed, and they want us all run off the internet. You got Correct, them right. Yes. That's exactly what I want. I want why, you all doxxed and brought into the street, and I want worse than that, if you want to know the truth, because that's what you tried to do to me. You tried to ruin exactly. my life. Exactly. You're trying to ruin Ted's life, and all you motherfuckers deserve the same exact fucking treatment. Exactly. It's tit for tat. Like, these people, they can do anything they want. They can do anything they want to you. They can try to completely destroy your life in every which way possible, destroy your reputation, smear you because it's funny to them. Right? They can do anything they want. They can dox your family. They can do it all. But then if you do exactly back to them what they did to you first they did it first like why am i doing these things why are you doing these things they did it first so okay if you're going to do that to me then i'm going to do it back to you and i don't want to hear the no no you can't do that to us only we can do that to you it says right here in the rules we made up fuck you fuck your rules we don't play by the rules that's why they hate us that is the reason why they hate us, because we don't bend the knee, we don't submit, we don't surrender, we don't apologize. I'll apologize if I got something wrong. I will apologize. I will 100% own anything that I got wrong. But throughout all of this, what did I do wrong? Absolutely fucking nothing. And getting back to Pisselin, Porcelain Adam Daly, so he was in the chat spamming my name, and it's like, bro, seriously? Like, really? Like, that's fucked up. 
You understand that's fucked up, right? And then he tried to do this, uh, you know, he tried to be sly about it. He tried to be, you know, aloof, the medic or bullshit. Oh, I'll do the, you know, whatever the fuck he said. Yeah. He just, he just totally went mask off and he was like, oh, you're making a big deal out of this, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh, I'm making a big deal out of this. Is, is that so? Okay. Well, since you don't consider this doxing, now it's time to take your fucking medicine. So what I did was I did a little bit of digging on my own, and it didn't take very long before I came across his legal name, which is Adam Daly. And by the way, I think we have even more than that, but I'm saving that for a rainy day. Just putting that out there. I think we have it all, but but we're saving that for later. There's going to be a lot of rain this summer, Ted. Uh, That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be a lot of rain. But uh, continue on with your... your, uh, Normally, normally not looking forward to rain, but in this case, very much looking forward to the storm. So, um, (laughs) so... Yeah, so so I was like, okay, well, it's not doxing, and all of these people, all of my my you know um, newfound enemies, they're all saying I'm overreacting, and it wasn't a dox because I was already doxed. Okay, well, Adam Daly, he was also already doxed, which means by their own logic, by their own rules, which I'm following to the T. These are not my rules; these are your rules. You tell me what the rules are, and I shall abide. And that is the only thing I did. So what did I do? I found his name, and I put it out there, and I said, ha ha, isn't that funny? Because you guys said it was funny when you did it to me. So I did it back. Hey, guys, why aren't you laughing? And all of a sudden, everyone is going, oh, my God, all the people that have just, you know, put everything possible out there on me, their reaction to this was, Oh, you doxed him, you doxed him. RPG is a doxer. He's doxing. And it's like, okay, so these people are just, they're, they're just, they're, like, this is how they operate. And this is what people need to understand is everything they accuse you of, not only are they guilty of it, they did it first. That's they right. wrote the rules. They, they wrote the rules yeah. that they don't follow. Yes. So when people see our response to provocation, they need to understand why are we doing these things? Why are we responding? We are responding in kind. That's right. We are responding in kind. And that is, those are the rules that I play by. If you're going to do something to me, you have now given me full justification and full permission to do it exactly back to you. Another point real quick I want to make here is, you know, uh, they're talking about, oh, you dox Adam Daly. Another thing, especially right now with Keo Faggot, is, oh, oh, RPG is a flagger. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, I have a screenshot of him trying to flag me off kick. Uh, and they did flag me off kick, actually. Uh, so, anyway, that's bullshit. But go ahead. I just want to point All of these people, there's a fucking encyclopedia on all the bullshit, on all the gay ops, on all the takedown attempts, on all the, the smears and the lies and the manip. Like, are you fucking joking me? What was your reaction to a pedophile Victor Sharp dragging me into court because he said that I was threatening to murder him? No such thing ever happened. Judas was going to testify against me in court. He was going to stand He's up turn for states it. against you. Are you serious? I swear to God. I swear on my life. I swear on everything in the world. The judge said this to me was going to go there- into court and testify that you threatened to kill Victor Sharp. He was going to testify. He was going to state before a judge that I was a legitimate and credible threat to Victor Sharp's life. Christ. He was on a Zoom call and they were they were going to bring him in if it went to trial. It didn't go to trial because I was able to negotiate it down to a no contact order. And at that point I was like, okay, no contact order for six months. I don't want to fucking contact this guy. I wasn't contacting this guy. I don't want to contact him. I want nothing to do with him. He's a fucking freak. I never wanted anything to do with him. The only reason why I ever let him in the RPG community was because Judas was the one who told me, oh, no, he's good. Like, that's the thing. Judas was the one who told me that. And at the time, the Brickers were totally slandering me. So everything that they were saying about Victor Sharp, I assumed was also slander. I never looked into it because I'm like, okay, well, you know, I know that everything the Brickers say about me is totally fake. So... 
you know, everything we say about Judas, everything we say about, you know, I was I was under the assumption if they're lying about me, they must be lying about him too. But then afterwards, after everything went down, I actually looked into it. I looked into uh, the, the Lavrov Groiper thread. People need to say I know it's I know it's been covered multiple times by now. I'm pretty sure you covered it yourself. Yeah. But you know, and then the cope is, oh, that was that wasn't him. That wasn't him. Uh, uh, that was his ex girlfriend. What? His ex girlfriend was pretending to be a a a faggot. Oh, like, <laughs> who, who believes this? Who the hell? You need to get your fuck. Like, do you brain cells? I was actually the dude? original one to cover this. Actually, yes, uh, I had a whole dossier pass along, and uh, yeah, that was his his excuse. Yes, that it was and his to girlfriend. this day. To this day, they push that shit. They say, oh, his ex-girlfriend was crazy, and his ex-girlfriend was pretending to be a male homosexual under her boyfriend's... Like, what, how is this even ever said and expected to be taken seriously? So, and then Judas also told me that um, it was debunked. He said it got debunked on Kiwi Farm, so, you know, no, nothing to see here. Go look into it. And, you know, I'm not trying to solve problems for Judas either, because at the time, someone that I think is a friend. I'm not trying to start problems for him. Also, yeah. Ojos was weird, but I was like, all right, he says that the guy's record is clean, so I'm going to take his word for it. But as it turns out, um, it couldn't be dirtier, the record of uh, pedophile Victor Sharp. And as far as the debunk, the Kiwi Farms debunk is concerned, this is actually, I'm not going to give too much, too much away here, because this is going to be um, one of the central focuses of my return stream. But uh, the Ultra's debunk on Kiwi Farms is an op. It's a total op. And it was posted by, I swear to God, a literal card-carrying communist. Like an, an, an actual radical leftist. I'm going to totally expose this person. I'm going to totally expose the, the, the op there. But... Um, yeah, so this this debunk that Judas likes to cite, Judas, actually, Victor Sharp, he he was the one who told her what to write. They were in communication with each other. So is the is this credible? Not at all. And that was something that I exposed when there was the uh, the Victor Sharp files. That was all put out there. So none of the, I'm not making any of this shit up. That is exactly what happened. Victor Sharp was in communication. With this Kiwi farmer, and uh, you know, she, she just, she just, she just, his his alibi, she just, she just posted it no. with, with zero, with with zero, uh, uh, you know, critical lens. She just put it out there because they're all they're all working together on this stuff. And so this all... stuff, it, it's not organic. No, it isn't happening, it's AstroTurf. You know, randomly, it's it's all AstroTurf. Fucking Kinoche, the reason why we're here today, Kinoche got caught in my thread with multi, at least two sock puppets. At least two. This was after he was already banned from Kiwi Farms. He probably has two. If I had to guess, I mean, Kinoche's not the type of guy who's just going to, you know, log off the internet, right? So he got banned from Kiwi Farms. And that's not it for him. He obviously got the third, fourth, and fifth accounts ready to go. Then you have Kiss Little Pedos. The, the, the thread is astroturfed. The entire forum is astroturfed. People don't realize that people they go to Kiwi Farms, they think it's like it's like Wikipedia. They think it's yes. like you know just people are making these objective observations and they're just uh, you know documenting events as they occur. Literally, the complete opposite. Literally, it's like more slanderous than the National Enquirer. It's got less credibility. It's, and, way, and, way, know, way less credibility than the Enquirer, by the way. But yeah, go ahead. Way way less, and that's why when you call them fan fiction farms, it drives them fucking mad because it couldn't be more spot on. Well, that's what it is. A bunch of schizos sitting around uh, making up fan fiction. Uh, and, you know, they made up things uh, in the casino. has said that I was raped by my mother. Uh, you know, just absolute just scum of the earth type shit that if somebody say in my face, uh, you know, uh, it would be uh, catching a murder case, uh, to be quite honest with you. You know what I mean? Uh, nice. And uh, this fat fuck who can't even walk, uh, if he would ever say that to my face, I would break this fucking... I'll calm down with my rhetoric because I don't want to get a strike here uh, on Rumble. Uh, but the things they said and lied about and made up, uh, and it's all for Josh Moon's pocketbook. It's all for him to have a troll shield for his 
cancerous behavior over the years. His love of Lollicon and Shotokan and wanting to kill his mother and all the fucking lies he's told over the years. What are your thoughts on Moon in particular? Um, it's weird with him because I never thought that I had any issues or beef with the guy. Like he was just somebody that kind of existed in the sector. Um, I know he has a stream. I tried watching the stream a few times. I, I would literally rather watch grass grow. That would be uh, far more uh, invigorating. I don't understand how anybody watches that stream. Like it's it's boring as fuck. I mean, the guy's got no talent at all. At least when it comes to streaming, zero talent, zero charisma, zero personality. His voice is cracking every three seconds. He he sounds like a total. Uh, maybe I shouldn't go too hard on him because then he's going to sick the personal army on me. But he already has. He already has. Well, people's he, voice you know who breaks like that were usually molested as a child. Uh, I, there's, I, there's definitely something wrong with him. I, you know, I've seen, I've seen pictures from him in the past. The guy looks like he, he, he looks like he has serious mental issues. Um, everything, everyone he goes after, it seems to be projection, right? Like, I don't know. Look, obviously. Some of the people that Kiwi Farms goes after, someone like Keffels, like there are some people, you know, Chris Chan, there are certain people that are um, like like legitimately, um, I don't know, evil. They're, they're legitimately, you know what it is? More often than not, these people are They're mentally ill. Yeah, as I said, they're usually mentally ill, right? Yeah, so it's like, it's like if you're getting off, like, don't get me wrong, Keffels, I don't have one good thing to say about Keffels. Obviously, well, like, that that is, that is a moral enemy of mine, I'm sure, you know? So this is not like a defensive Kempels, but if you're somebody who you're, you're so fixated and obsessed with, like, targeting these people who are blatantly mentally ill, like, yeah, this is not a defensive Kempels, once again. But, like, if you're getting off on that, and it does appear to me that he is getting off, and, you know, it, it's all done under the guise of, like, oh, I'm against, uh, you know, I'm against whatever, whatever, you know, they, they say like, oh, it's because of this or it's because of that. They claim, they claim it's because, oh, it's the, you know, I don't know what you want to say these things because I know they're going to take it out of context. I so I'm trying to tread carefully here. Sure. But, but basically, basically they come up with this, um, this, this explanation for why they target these people that sounds nice. It sounds good. But, like, there's something else going on there. I don't care what anybody says. There's something else going on there. This is someone who is deeply disturbed. This is someone who is deeply unhappy. Um, if the guy wants to be forms at the same time, he doesn't know any of the lore on anybody. Or, or, like, yeah. or, like, he pretends not to. I, I honestly, I, I don't know if he's just either. If he's doing it on purpose or if he really just has, like, some kind of mental disorder where he just misremembers things. I, I, I go back and forth between whether he's lying on purpose or he's just dumb or can't keep up or i don't know it's it's, it's weird i think i think i'm mostly in the camp that he does it on purpose because like as yeah, far as um too. as far as his, as far as like his technical prowess goes like when it comes to you know like running and operating kiwi farms and like keeping it up even after all the uh, attempts there have been to take it down that that does require um you know like some level of know-how yeah. so i think that i think he just what you know there's many people in the sector like this they're just it, it's, it's the manager approach where you just pretend like you don't know yes. anything, even though like you're glued to the shit twenty four seven, and it's like this, um, it's like this culpable deniability, uh, a shit they do where it's like, oh geez, I don't know anything that's going on. I I called them out on on X. I forgot exactly how this exchange went down, but um, you know I called them out because like because. Because of like all the shit that had been posted about me on Kiwi Farms, like I used to think originally that there was some type of uh, code as to you know who they go after. Like I thought it was people who are like genuinely doing things that are very very like someone that needs to be exposed because they're like raping children or because they're killing animals. That was kind of like how uh, that's that's what I was told Kiwi Farms. Like there was like some moral you know, moral code, and they're just targeting, like, the bad guys, right? Right. So, but then, um, you know, eventually they started posting all of this shit about me, just, just you know, all, like, I was getting completely doxxed, even though I had never committed any crime. I think my record is totally clean. If it wasn't, that would be on Kiwi Farms. Sure. Um, you know, like, I had never done anything truly objectionable compared to many of the people that are on there, so I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? 
and he acted like he didn't know who I was. He was like, oh, I have no idea who you are, bro. So, okay, so you don't know who I am, but you're allowing these people to post every single, like, bit of private, personal information that there is. Like, you don't know who I am. So shouldn't you, shouldn't you know who I am before you allow these people to do what they're doing to me? Like, shouldn't that be one of the, I don't know, like, there, there should be some guideline there. Right? Like, the you should at least be, yeah. right, some, some criteria, because the reality is, is if you make one, if you're a streamer in this, in this sphere, and you make one deranged enemy, that's all it takes. All it takes is one deranged psychopath out there to decide they don't like you, and just like that, all they have to do is go to Kiwi Farms, and they have full freedom, full reign, to anything and everything that they want about you. There's absolutely no line that they won't cross. And on top of that, it's not even just people in the in the sector, people outside of the sector who are using TV farms as a weapon. Like, it's really bizarre to me that, uh, you know, Josh's whole crusade is against, like, uh, is like against the left mostly because it's mostly leftists who are trying, you know, like these left-wing truths who are trying to shut the platform down. But at the same time, the site is totally infiltrated by these exact types, you know, by these types who know they can co go on Kiwi Farms and they can dox the fuck out of anybody who they consider racist or anti-Semitic or, or whatever it is. And the proof for that is the OP of my own thread. She's a communist. She's a literal, like, people are going to think I'm exaggerating when I say that. Literally, I have smoking gun video evidence. This person is a card-carrying communist, anti-white, anti-racist, uh, uh, Zionist, all, all of it. I mean, not Zionist, but all of it. You know, like, this person is diametrically opposed to me politically in every way possible, and this is who you're allowing to to post all of this information under the guise that, or, or with the excuse that, oh, we're doing it for comedic purposes? Really? No, it's not, it's not being done for comedic purposes. This is somebody who, for political purposes, political, politically motivated, is trying to destroy somebody's politics that they disagree with. Ah, so and that's the story they that's really what that's all about it's mostly um leftists trying to tear down right wing streamers uh and uh there's a lot of many different uh examples of that or oh he's mean to women there's a lot of feminists on there too and trannies too of course but um and oh, ralph is so mean to women and da, 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 and he doesn't like them if anything i like women too much uh if you want to know the truth uh it's got me in a lot of problems uh but uh yeah there's there's a ton of that going on now you mentioned medicare several times uh, during this, uh, so I would be remiss uh, in not doing my job as an interviewer uh, if I didn't get your thoughts on Medicare. Yeah, sure. Um, so just to, just to cap things off with Josh. Um, well, yeah, cap that off first, and then we'll, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the thing with Josh is, you know, I never really had any direct beef with the guy. It just wasn't until after the fact. And then he tried to play dumb. He's like, I don't know who you are. But then he knew immediately five seconds later who I was. He was like, are you the guy who saw, who's saying SpongeBob? And like, this was supposed to be like an epic mic drop moment. Do people think that's an embarrassing clip for me? The best they ever clip? It was a fucking playful thing that I did on. Like, that was a fun, silly, goofy thing that I did on stream. You know, something bad happened to Nick, and then I played best day ever, right. you know? So, like, that's all that was. And, like, uh, Kino Fag and the rest of these, these idiots, they're spamming that clip. Like, I'm, like, that's not an embarrassing clip for me. That's, it was just a silly thing that I did. But anyway, um, yeah, so, like, the thing with Josh is I really never had any issue with the guy. He was just, like, I don't know, just one of the people in the sector. Thought the streams were boring as fuck, but, you know, I saw... Another thing that happens a lot, too, is you see what other people are saying about a person, and, like, even if you don't see it yourself because you don't know, you kind of just go along with it. So, like, you know, a lot of people in my audience, because I was an A-log, they were like, oh, Josh Moon is so great. So I was like, all right, people seem to like him, so I guess, you know... That it is what it is, um, but I don't know. It just seems to be somebody who has like really, really deep rooted anger. Like he like hates his mother or something, and like he's using human yeah, he as like a way of like unleashing his rage on the world. Like it's this really weird thing that's going on with him. 
Um, and I know they're, they're going to take this and they're going to splice it up and they're going to make him uh, an enemy of mine now. And I, I don't fucking care because they, they did it all. They are like, they already did it all. So it's like, okay, you did everything. You put it all out there. There's nothing left. I mean, there's one thing left, I guess, but you know, hopefully it doesn't get to that point. And if they want to, you know, ever try something like that, I'm, I'm more than prepared to. <laughs> I understand myself. what you mean. I understand exactly what you mean there. But- by the way. Also, hit like right now if you're watching this stream. Hit like. Send in any comments or questions. Uh, I'm going to move it to Medicare. Uh, yes, yes. What are, your, what are your thoughts there? So, the thing with Medicare is... <laughs> it's like a fourth or fifth time. I'm going to say the same exact thing. So, the thing with Medicare... I was in the game. I can say the same things. So, um, you know, I was, I was cool with Piano Casino Judas. The thing with Manager is I really didn't have an issue with the guy. I thought he was kind of funny. I didn't think he was as funny as people said. Like, people were like, oh, my fucking God, Manager. You know, like, they act like he's, like, the funniest guy alive. I do think that, you know, he does have uh, comedic chops. I did watch some of his streams. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, even you know, you dislike a person, you can be honest about them. Like, even when I was A-logging Nick, I never doubted or questioned his talents. Clearly, Nick Fuentes is an extremely talented person, and even when I had full blown derangement against him, I never said otherwise. But, so when it comes to Medicare, you know, Medicare is obviously very uh, good at what he does as, as far as being a streamer goes. I think, think people say he's the funniest guy alive. I would personally dispute that. But, whatever. Whatever, you know. I, I he seemed... He seemed likable, um, you know, and I know how respected he is when it comes to the sector. So the fact that I was getting, you know, attention and I was getting recognized by this person, that was big for me, you know, personally. Like, as a streamer, that was, like, a, that was a pretty substantial yeah. personal achievement that, like, this, you know, sector legend, as he would be referred to, was, you know, acknowledging that I existed. So, you know... Um, thought that was cool and at the time i liked him and i thought that you know things were cool and then things happened with the kino casino and like he didn't jump on the bandwagon right away but like eventually he did and he just started he like, always running. waits until he sees which way the wind's blowing for yeah sure. and then he that's, jumps that's, that way that's his style ex- exactly so that's what happened so so basically yeah, basically, he saw which way the wind was blowing, and then he started, you know, it, it just just doing everything that the rest of them did. They all hopped on that bandwagon. It became, uh, you know, that was the thing to do. And basically, it became like if you're a cool person, then you hate RPG. Like, if you're a cool person in the sector, you hate RPG. So basically, like, it became popular to dislike me, and nobody wanted to defend me, and nobody wanted to associate with me because I had my, my reputation had just been totally... Uh, tarnished by by this um, you know collaborative effort to take me out. So um, yeah, so I was disappointed because I was hoping that like he was you know what it is is I was very naive and oblivious to the uh, the the machinations is that the word of the sector. I was I was very uh, oblivious to the inner workings. Of, of the sector and how things go and like what relationships in the sector actually are and how they're basically, you know, how they're fleeting with most people, unfortunately. So um, I got blindsided by a lot of what ended up happening because there were people like I thought we were ride or die. I'm not talking about Medicare, but there were people, you know, I thought we were ride or die, people that I had, you know, multiple um, like, like voice chats, like real long conversations. Sure. With, like just, just people that I, interacted with every single day that I thought had my back, that I thought would have my back, no matter what happened to me. And as soon as things got, you know, this is where it was hard to relate to Nick, because I remember when Nick was saying this, when he was having his run-in with Medicare, as soon as like the waters got a little bit rough and a little bit rocky, it would absolutely blow your mind. And like it, it's so disheartening and demoralizing to realize just how quick people are to to jump overboard and to abandon ship and to say fuck you know as soon as as soon as that wind changes direction nobody wants to nobody wants to be seen on the wrong side of the line even though it wasn't actually the wrong side of the line but that's how it was being framed by you know all these people so you know Medicare he saw the way things were going and then he hopped on the bandwagon and I actually I never really 
I never ever actually sent anything directly to Medicare. Um, this is like the first time really commenting on it. Yes. Um, the reason why is because this. Well, the reason why is because um, like he's dying of cancer. And that's actually the oh, reason why. Like, allegedly. I'm not, like I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna attack you. I, I understand you have your reasons for having beef with him. So this yes. is not a commentary on you or anybody else. Oh, but but for me. The reason why I never responded to any of his what, whatever, whatever he said about me, is because like the man is dying of cancer, and I just feel I just wouldn't feel right doing that. So, you know, in, in my mind, it's like whatever. The guy's going to be dead soon. I'm not going to talk shit about him, and that, that that's the only reason why I never talked about him. So, um, now he trashed you in know, February on the casino. Uh, yeah, he trashed me, and he was he was peddling all this bull. He said he said that I took Victor Sharp to court. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, what, what is wrong? I, it doesn't even make so that the guess the thing that that's like, that was a major major lie to say. Like, that's literally that is the complete opposite of what happened. So it's like, what the fuck, bro? And and once again, you're gonna act like you don't know the facts, Josh Blue Medicare. These guys are gonna act like. You people, this is what you live for. This is your entire existence is this online bullshit. You're going to act like, and like, that's not an insignificant detail either. That's like a pretty crucial part of that story. And they always get the crucial part of the story wrong because they're dishonest hacks. And they're trying, they're not trying to set the record straight. They're not trying to spread the truth of the good word. They're trying to destroy people, you know, with, um, with, with, with Kinoche and you know others who will not be mentioned, right. uh, the the reason why this all began even before Gabe Hoffman told Kino Casino to to come after me was because I was in a group chat with Kinoche with some other people, and they actually at the time were they got me to unknowingly push a gay up about you. I forgot what the gay app was. I think it might have been related to Pansu. But uh, I, I think it was a Pansu sex is, By the way, I want to say, for the record, I, I can't comment on, on certain things. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. But, but, but uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, though. I'll, I'll just say that. Uh, yes. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's just certain things legally I can't uh, discuss. But there was a gay op, uh, and it... Well, I've been ten dollars! It, 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 it was, uh, as you described, I'll just say. But go ahead. Yes, yes. So basically, there was a gay op targeting you. That's all I'll say about it. And um, they duped me into pushing it. Now, the thing about that is, you know, my, my whole shtick, like, the way that I would posture myself is that basically, like, I was the honest A-log, right? Like, that was kind of the way I prayed myself, where it was, like, all the other A-log streamers, like, you know, Casino and, and, you know, those types, they're not, they're, because to me, it was not about the drama, it was not about the sensationalism. To me, I was making a moral argument that I felt was, was was correct at the time so i was making a moral argument and it was very important for me to get my facts straight because if if i am lying then i am doing exactly what like then i lose the moral high grounds right? right so i lose any moral high ground that i think i have if i am uh participating in the same tricks that my enemy my enemies were using against me but uh, Kinoche and others, they duped me into pushing a gay op about you, which I did cover on one of my streams, not knowing it was a gay op, but afterwards it was exposed, you know, by you or by, by your people. It was exposed as a gay op. And when I found out, I felt, I felt like an idiot. I felt like I had been swindled and I had, I had been swindled. So in this group chat, I confronted Kino Shea and these people and I called them out because I was pissed off because now I'm like a fucking idiot because you guys, for your entertainment, you tricked me, damaging my credibility, damaging my reputation as the, you know, honest A-log, right? So now, now my credibility is taking a hit because you guys wanted to, like basically they were having entertainment at my expense. And yes. I think that was very funny. 
So, you know, I went off on them and I called them faggots and I told them off. And that was really the first domino in what would eventually lead to the Kino Casino coming after me. But that was like, if you really want to go back to the beginning, that was what, um, you know, that was what, I guess, motivated certain individuals to like dedicate their lives to destroying my reputation and that's when um that's that's basically when all like these uh, all this like anti-rpg propaganda started getting pumped out by certain accounts and people didn't realize what was going on so so um yeah so that's basically uh how things started there yeah and i it's just, it's just, it, and it was basically done just for a, a content drought, right? Uh, to, to fuck with you, to make you content, and you were the main guy on their whole team, really, doing all the work. Uh, and it's, it was just dirty to the core, honestly. Oh, and this is something I wanted to hit. Um, so, before we made up, um, and I was actually doing this to fuck with you if I'm being honest but um, I, I saw you're catching a lot of heat and um, I think they'd already started fucking with you the Kino Casino at this time uh, and I I put out a tweet and I said you know what we've had a lot of beef and we got each other blocked da, 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 da. but let's just make peace right let's let's make peace we'll just agree to drop everything and just go oh, back yeah, to not yeah, talking yeah. about each other and let's move on and now I was doing that to throw a grenade in you guys' camp, actually. But um, I mean, I would have I would have been serious about it if you would have accepted it. But I did it, not even thinking you would consider it, really. Uh, and to just kind of you know throw a little match uh, into into the fire there, right? Throw a little gas on the fire. Uh, and you're in these group chats and you're like, yeah, well, maybe, you know, maybe I should consider that. I'm kind of tired of fighting with Ralph for, you know, a year and a half, two years, and it has been really nasty, and I am thinking about uh, taking him up on his offer. Uh, and Jaden loses his mind. All these yep, people yep. lose his mind. Um, Anton, all these people are like, no, how can you how can you make peace with Ralph? And, you know, what are you thinking? Like, this guy's the scum of the earth. He's so evil. Like, how could you even consider doing this? Uh, and then that was kind of the start of, of of, well, uh, partially the start of Jaden yes, and yes, some definitely. of his crew turning on you, right? Uh, for you even considering that offer. And then when I had my falling out with Nick uh, and started all that stuff, they were the first ones in line to kiss my ass and accept that same offer. Yep, yep. And, um, and you know, when they did it, it was like far more shameless. Yes. You know, so. So I'm glad you brought that up because I would like to actually uh, discuss that. So what happened there was, yeah, you made that offer. And at the time, like I'm just, you know, putting, putting all cards on the table here. At the time, I mean, as you saw even in, in the DMs, because they were leaked by Victor Sharp, by, by Jaden. They both together leaked those DMs. They were apparently, um, like, recording the mod chat, which yeah. goes to show, by the way, that their intentions were uh, not exactly uh, the most forthright. Yeah. Now, people will say, people in response to that will say, oh, RPG, didn't you leak their DMs? I didn't screenshot, I did not save a copy of those conversations until after I realized that they had flipped. As soon as it clicked in my mind, oh shit, these guys are, uh, these are not friendlies anymore. As soon as they did that, that was the moment when I saved both of those chats. So people, like, people think, oh, why did RPG save those chats? Clearly he was, he was going to do this all along. No, that's not what happened, actually. Actually, what happened was I found out that Victor Sharp was conspiring behind my back, telling my, my supporters, just making up outright lies, saying, oh, RPG called you this, RPG called you that. So he was trying to turn people against me because I was considering accepting your, your peace deal. I was considering accepting the truce. You and me at that time, we weren't even actively uh, it combating wasn't, anybody. No, nah, not really. It, it wasn't active. Like I remember that, like you and me were not friends. We were still, no, we, were friendly. You know, we still didn't like but each other. But it wasn't like we a daily thing. Like it was there for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was no active conflict between us. Right. So when you made that offer, the timing was actually like the timing was right because my mood behind the scenes was beginning to change. It became apparently evident to me that Nick had won, and also that. 
I was just over it. I was just like, it had been two, people need to understand how long two years is. Like, that's not like two minutes, two, fuck, it's actually probably two and a half, maybe even three years. This was a very, very long time that I, and I'm not happy that this is what I chose to do with my life for those two, three years, but that's what I got sucked into. That, not, not that I'm, you know, not that I'm denying accountability, but I'm just saying, that's what I got sucked that's into. Yeah. And right, that's what happened. So, you know, um, I lost my train of thought there for a second. That's okay. Take time. Oh, yeah. The group, the group chats. Uh, yes. You got sucked into that. Um, they were recording them, and you can pick up from there if you can if you can uh, recall. Where yeah, going. yeah. So, so at the time, the timing was perfect. And, and I will admit, even though it was exposed in the, the leaked DMs, I will admit at the time... I was not doing that. I was doing that more for strategic reasons than anything else. Like at the time, I still had animosity towards you, but I was like, you know what? I'm not actively fighting with him and I'm ready to move on from all of this anyway. So like, why wouldn't I accept this offer when I'm trying to move on? Like at that time, I was trying to pivot the stream in a new direction because I don't want to be like Judas and be a, a, a Knicks either for the rest of my life, because what would be more pathetic than that? It's like, I, I well, it's did the Knicks thing. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. Years. I did it. I said what I had to say. All I'm doing now is repeating myself. I'm making the same exact points that I've made a billion times. I'm making them over and over again. And this, by the way, this is a, a normal progression for anybody, no matter what they do with their lives, no matter you know what you which you cover as a commentator, right? People, they, they move on to other things. Even like you look at bands, like bands, they're known for one sound and they don't just make the same. Some bands don't just make every album exactly the same. You know, a lot of times what they'll boring. do is they'll, it's right, like it's being boring an actor for play the that. same role. That's why people don't want to get stuck in a soap opera and play the same role for 30. And that's a good job. You got a stable gig, but it's the same fucking shit every single day. Right. And it's not artistically stimulating. Exactly. So it's like I was at that point, I was I was just losing motivation. I didn't want to do it anymore. You threw out that offer. The timing was perfect. So I consulted with my mods. And as everybody saw, like basically every single person in my mod chat was against me. And I'm like, what? you know what it is? You know what happens? Nobody, nobody in the world is in my shoes. Nobody else is. So it's very, very, and this is not me, you know, I'm not taking shots at anybody. There's people have stood by me. I, I respect those guys. I love those guys. I really, really appreciate, you know, these people know who they are. Really, really appreciate everything, you know, they, they've done for me. But at the end of the day, like, Nobody in the world is in my shoes. Nobody in the world is in your shoes. Like the buck stops with me and I'm the one who has to go through it. And I'm the one who has to deal with the re repercussions one way or the other. It's very easy for all these people, everybody in the peanut gallery to tell you what yes. you should do. And everybody thinks that they know best. And but it's like, actually, not that everybody is wrong all the time. Not that I'm unwilling to you know, hear people out. But I was definitely way too democratic when it came to my approach as a streamer, when it came to my approach as like the you know leader of my small community. I was way too democratic, way more and, and, and that's why I see why people, you know, like Nick are the way that they are. Because if you have too many too many cooks in the kitchen, then it all it all falls to shit. It should you know and at the end of the day, Nick is the only person who has to deal with the consequences of whatever decision he makes and nobody else does. So, you know, everybody in my mod chat, oh, Ralph is evil, you can't do this. And I was like, but I really, really want to just make peace because I want to move on with my life. None of these people were going through what I was going through. None of these people were dealing with the harassment that I was dealing with. So how easy is it for you to say you shouldn't do that? Because to you, this is just like, I'm not even a real person. I'm just a person you right. see on the screen. This isn't real life to you. But to me, it's real life. To me, I have to deal, actually deal with this shit. So I was seeing it very differently from the mods. And this, and another thing I want to say is this is not me throwing anybody under the bus. I don't want anybody who's listening to this taking it the wrong way. Um, but I'm just kind of putting it all out there right now, and I'm expressing and myself. I think you're, I was, you're doing it excellently, by the way. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just I'm putting it all out there and expressing you know, what the thought process was at the time. 
So, um, yeah, so you put the truce out there. The timing was perfect. I wanted to accept it, even if it was just for strategic reasons, because I was ready to move on. I was ready to pivot. And also, you know, when it came to uh, the Groypers, like, the Groypers are ruthless. I mean, you, you know, because you're, you know. I've been on both sides of it, and they are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, okay, like after dealing with that, you know, for two years, I was ready to put it all to to, to bed, and little did I know that I was just going to be starting up uh, round two, so that was not the plan, but it's like, I but, I but I had to do what I did, because I just, I, my heart wasn't in it anymore, I didn't actually feel the way that I was saying I felt on stream when it came to Nick America First, these other people, um, so, you know, I put that out there. Some people think, oh, he bent the knee. Oh, we capitulated. Oh, he this, he that. Uh, actually, no, I didn't. We went to war for a very long time. We had a meeting of the minds. We, you know, shook hands. And there's peace now. This happens all the time in life to everybody. There are people today that you are friends with that you hated a year ago. Sure. There are people today. And, th and then the opposite is true. Life is constantly in flux. Relationships are constantly in flux. Fundamentally, I am still the same person that I always was. I just have a new perspective on things. And the, the, the fact that they only have themselves to blame for that. By putting me what they put me through, it gave me a totally new perspective on you and why you have done the things you've done and why you made decisions that at the time didn't make sense to me. But so looking back on it, I go, oh, well, so that's, why Ralph did that. well, that's why Ralph said that. Yeah. Same thing with Nick. There was a lot of things that Nick did, especially when he was fighting with Medicare. A lot of things Nick did, a lot of things Nick said at the time that I was... You know, I was uh, incensed. I was outraged. Oh, my gosh. How can Nick say this? How can Nick do that? But, at the, you know, in the end, uh, clearly Nick knew what he was doing because look where Nick is and look where everybody who opposed him, look where they are, you know? So that's, well, um, Nick's you know. so much more influential than Medicare. It's not even close. Uh, I mean, all, all these people, uh, all these yes. people, like Nick has real actual I mean, I'm just being honest. I know some yeah, people in my audience still, still don't like Nick or whatever, uh, and we never, you know, officially had our chat and squash things, but I just dropped it on my own. Uh, because, like, I don't want this. Like, this is just uh, stupid. I was stupid to get sucked into it in the first place. If I hadn't have been where I was in my personal life, uh, it never would have happened. But I had people for weeks, no, go back in on Nick. No, keep this up. Keep going. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that because our goals align more than they diverge uh, in reality. Uh, and whatever personal beef, it was all petty anyway. Uh, and I take a lot of the blame for it, although I felt disrespected. You know, I'm from Memphis. I'm a Memphis nigga, you know. Uh, so sometimes that gets the best of me. Um, but looking back, uh, I, I think it was a mistake, if you want to know the truth about it. Uh, and, you know, when I backed off, there were a lot of people... Like you said, keep going. No, keep going. No, you got to keep attacking. Well, I'm the one who has to live this fucking life. Uh, yep. You're the spectator in the audience. I'm the one who has to take the heat. And like you said, the motherfuckers are ruthless. And they were ruthless when I was with them, too. And I was ruthless. And I can be ruthless. But it's like, I don't want that. Why am I fighting, uh, fighting a guy who I agree with? Not on the, you know, uh, the theocracy and all that. That's not me. But, like, you know, anti-Zionism, that's my number one issue, basically, right? Like, I, And why am I even fighting this guy? On behalf of Jewish Gabe Hoffman? The money man behind the scenes? Literally? Backing this up against him, doxing other white nationalists, doxing other right wingers, paying these two faggots from Canada to eat the heart out of the sector and turn it into some fucking faggotry. That's exactly what happened. They turned the sector right. from a right wing just hub, just buzzing hive ready to attack to a cucked faggot gay club. That's what they turned it into, like a gay nightclub, what, like the Pulse nightclub. That's what they turned the motherfucker into. Uh, and yeah, well, hopefully, it hopefully, it runs, hopefully it runs the same way. Just joking, of course. Of course, of course, <laughs> kidding, kidding. We don't want to see any real violence. 
Uh, but that's what they turned it into, and it was by design, and it was through money. Uh, and a lot of these people are easily bought off. And one thing I never did, even when I was going against Nick, uh, was taking any Gabe Hoffman money. I had him on the show, defeated him in the debate on my show, actually. Uh, and, you know, he'd constantly send me things, and like, do this, do that. He always does that, by the way. Uh, but I was never on his team. I was never going to start promoting Zionism. I'm not that guy. I'm never going to be that guy. I'd rather retire from life than start promoting Zionism and take the payoff and take the call like Worski and Fat Ass did. Uh, and so that's just not not me. Uh, and so that's why I dropped the beef with Nick. And quite frankly, it was s silly in the first place. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, there was I mean, some good was... content out of it, but it's like, you know, do I want that to be my life for the for the next years? No, I don't. So. Yeah, I, um, well, first off, I, I do want to apologize if I put, I, I didn't mean, because I, I realized after you kind of went off there, I realized that maybe I was putting you in a tight spot because I know your situation with, uh, you know, Nick is um, delicate, shall we say, um, or, you know. We it, haven't it, spoken. We haven't spoken. Uh, and, you know, I assume someday we probably will. But uh, who knows? Um, but I haven't been attacking him because uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's I don't think it's fruitful. First off. Uh, you're not. Uh, what are you attacking? Right, you're attacking a monster uh, at this point. Uh, and then also, I'm more concerned about attacking Zionist control of our foreign policy and our domestic policy than I am about attacking Nick Fuentes. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, it's dropped on my end. I know uh, he may feel another way. I don't know for sure though, because we haven't talked, so I couldn't say. Uh, but yeah, that's like, what I know. I, said publicly, I know this. So. Yeah, I know there's people listening right now, you know, in that camp who aren't going to be happy that uh, I'm having this conversation with you. Sure. Um, you know, my 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 perception, and look, I understand it's it's, it's very. I, I get there's there's you know um, I I get both well, I went sides. Hard. I'm not, I'm not I trying to be hard. there either. Ted, I went hard. I mean, you know, uh, and so I understand that there's some people who are never going to forgive. Uh, the way I went in, because that's how, you know, when I go to war, I go to war, uh, and, um, you know, there was some harsh things said, I coined a few phrases, I went really hard uh, in some areas, um, but they did too, to be honest, uh, if you want to know the truth, uh, and so, I don't know, some people may not be willing to forgive something like that. Uh, people at saying I'm begging for my cozy channel back. Uh, no, of course not. Um, I just don't think it's um, I, I don't think it's the, the right path uh, for what I want to see happen in the world and with my career. So that's why I stopped it. Whether we're ever uh, you know, cool, quote unquote again or not, that's why I dropped it. Yeah, and I think um you know, I, I respect the approach that you take, and I think that I understand it was uh, it was a complicated, you know, the way things went down. I, I, I understand, you know, I try to be a fence hitter, both sides, um, things got tense. So I know that's not something that, like, you know, that, that everybody is going to be able to uh, move past tomorrow. Sure. Um, if, if ever, I don't know. Like, I'm also not trying to meddle in, in affairs right. that don't sure. Sure. directly uh, involve me. But, you know, ultimately... What's most important to me and what I'm hearing from you is actually like we're actually uh, similar in this way. The most important thing to me is the the political cause. You know, you're driven by your uh, motivation to take down Zionism. I'm also driven by that. I'm also a, a, a die hard blood red conservative. Um, this country is totally fucked up, as everybody knows by now. So. Um, that's really, like, ultimately, I care more about that than any of this petty, meaningless garbage that takes place in, uh, in, in the sector. Um, now, as far as Dave Hoffman goes, you know, he also tried to recruit me, like, very early on. He tried to yes. get me to do uh, a charity stream, literally for Zionism. Like, he wanted me to fundraise for Jews, and I'm like, <laughs> um, I don't know who the fuck you think I am, but just because I don't like Nick at that moment doesn't mean that I am a shill for the Jews. But, like, this guy, he's sliding in everybody's DMs yes. with that same offer. I mean, uh, uh, even with, with, with Ashton, you know, PPP, and Worski, like, we saw the gifts that were sent to them, and that's only what they were willing to share. Like, do you think, like, okay, 
for 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 Dave Hoffman to send that the food platter. The, the kosher food platter that he sent to the kosher casino. That means that Gabe Hoffman has their address. Yes. Like how else could he send that to them? Now that, that detail alone suggests an incredible level of comfortability that they have with it. Like, think about that. Like, you know, who Gabe Hoffman is, you know, what this guy is capable of all the slime that he's participated in in the past. You know this guy, you know, he's got the money, he's going to pull up the Jewish lawyers, and he's going to sit them on, on anybody he can, right? So it's like, for them to give Gabe Hoffman their home address, or their whatever, the apartment they live in, to give them their home address, like, that that should say, that, that tells you everything you need to know about how those two operate, and what they're willing to do to get paid. And they cheered so, on him spreading the stone toss docks. And yes. said, get on the train to Zion or get docks. They literally said that on air. And it wasn't yeah. a joke. No, nope, no, nope. but the thing is, is that's how they operate. So they'll say it and you'll say it with a smile and a laugh, and yes. then all the retards go, Whoa, see, he laughed, he laughed, I mean, it was a joke. Uh, no, it means that he's a pussy who's definitely afraid of Gabe Hoffman and the guy the guy has them both by the balls now. He knows where they fucking live. It's over. It's like they they are absolutely they can't flip on him even if they wanted to. That's what I said. Now they cannot flip on him. He has an address and he probably has a lot more than that. So if people think this is crazy talk, um no, we know for a fact that he knows where they live. That's that's documented. Um and I said the same so, thing on air when he sent that. And I said, if he's got that, he's got everything. Uh, and there's no telling, you know, this is a guy who, who's been dirty his whole entire public life, right? Uh, and his whole movie's a fraud. Uh, he tried to sue people involved with his own movie because they called it out for bullshit that it is. Um, he tried to sue sex abuse victims saying he owned their story and they couldn't talk about it elsewhere. Imagine how big of a scumbag you have to be to do something like that. You understand? Like, oh, that's I that. that. no, it's unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. It's really mind blowing to even consider. Uh, and if that's what they're showing on air, I guarantee you, and they say, oh, he only sends $20 here and there. He's paying them off air. There's 100%. No doubt about that. It's There's so no doubt. fucking obvious. The guy is yes. sending, the guy is sending, I'm going to assume that food powder wasn't like wasn't like twenty dollars. I'm gonna no. assume that was. It looked like a hundred. It looked like a, dollars, yeah. Yeah, at least like that was a feast. Not to mention the shipping. The shipping on something like that. Yeah, that was two or three hundred dollars worth of food, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's obvious that there's uh, there's a bear there, and their response to this is going to be, whoa, you know, they're going to they're going to mock it, they're going to downplay it, but it, it's really really obvious that there's something going on there. But um, staying on the topic of Gabe Hoffman, so when it comes to becoming Babylon, the documentary that was supposed, it was supposed to be this anti Nick, anti America first documentary. Um, I wanted to mention this earlier when we were talking about Judas, but I forgot to. So I think what actually happened with Ju when Judas started to turn on me was actually like he was already beginning to turn on me when you made that that peace offering on Twitter. Yes. Um, and the reason for that was is because you know Gabe Hoffman, I have very very extremely strong reason to suspect was the the financier financier. The, the financier, financier, yeah, financier of right, Seven, ten, 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 one point twenty five speed. And when I found that out, I did a whole stream on it. That video was up on YouTube for a long time. Even if I took down all my other content, I left it up just so people could see the evidence for themselves. That very, very incredibly strongly suggests that Gabe Hoffman was going to fund that documentary, and I, and. Um, the thing is, is Judas, I unknowingly, I didn't realize at the time that I was doing this, but when I exposed that Gabe was connected to that documentary, I unknowingly implicated Jaden. And then that's when Jaden, unbeknownst to me, started to, to turn against me. Because now he had it out for me because I exposed him as the, the you know, the... On, and you didn't even yeah, mean I, to. Yeah, right. Yeah, go ahead. I didn't mean to because I, I, at the time, I believed him to be innocent. And I, I didn't know that 
Like, I didn't think that he would knowingly work with somebody like Gabe Hoffman. So when I put that out there, I thought that I was doing something that he would also, you know, like, like he would support. get behind. Yeah. Right, that he would support the fact that I was exposing Gabe Hoffman. But as it turns out, the complete opposite happened. And Judas and, like, a lot of his inner circle guys um, who were also, some of them were also working on this documentary behind the scenes. This was basically when, like, the Judas gangers, the very beginning of them starting to uh, turn against me. And then basically when you made your peace offering, that was like the straw that broke the camel's back because at that point they felt like, you know, they felt like I was out of control because first I exposed them by accident for being connected to that documentary, being connected to Gabe Hoffman. Then there was the peace deal. And then, you know, me considering the peace offering. And that was apparently yeah, beyond you didn't even the for them. You were just considering it. You didn't even accept it. Yeah. I, I did it. I should have, but unfortunately, it's tough, you know, when, like, well, everybody yeah, is against you. Unfortunately, I, I did buckle to the pressure there, and, you know, in the end, it made absolutely no difference because, you know, as you mentioned, like, three months later, they were they were sucking you off. That's right. But that was, a, but that was okay. That was okay for them, yeah. Uh, it's just... It's just... The whole thing is fake. Um, th th they have rules for the for for thee, but not for me, right? Uh, yeah, and yeah, all these yeah. fake made up sector rules, they're not followed. Uh, and I get called out, and they and they talk shit about me. Worski cries about doxing. There's no bigger doxer on the planet Earth than Worski. He docks Bibble off of the internet, my former co-host, and brags about it on air. And they talk about flagging. There's no bigger flagger than Andy Worski. All these motherfuckers have all these fake rules that they never follow, but they try to use those talking points against you. All the while, they're playing dirty tricks. And then I catch heat when I come out here and say, Yeah, I'm playing dirty tricks, motherfucker. Because all you fucks are playing dirty tricks. Right? You have to play dirty tricks when you're in a fucking den of snakes. There's no other way to survive. Yeah, you know what it is? Is basically... You know, so you as a public facing person, you, know, you have the stream, right? So they're always going to have like that clip of you saying it, actually saying it out loud yes. on camera. And then they're going to, you know, they're going to hide behind their anonymity. They're going to hide behind their, their tweets or whatever. So like they're able to frame it as, oh, Ralph is unhinged and Ralph is spurging out and Ralph is doxing this totally innocent person yes. for absolutely no reason at all. People need to understand that that is never, never the way it goes down in the sector. If somebody is accusing you of being a doxer, they have doxed. If somebody is accusing you of being a flagger, they have flagged. Okay, I lost my payment processor towards the end of my stream. Did any of these people have a word to say about that? When I was drug into court by a pedophile, did any of these people have anything to say about that? When I was being stalked, when I was being stalked in real life, when pictures of my home, when pictures, video was being posted online, did any of these people have anything to say about any of it? No. So I don't, I don't want to hear the first word. I don't want to, I don't give a shit. Okay. They can cry and bitch and moan and the crocodile tears all they want it is absolutely meaningless to me it will never stop me from doing what i have to do in order to defend myself which i am doing in response which i am doing in kind now let me ask you this at the time you know Jaden got completely blown the fuck out by nick uh and i you know, I was at the time I was thinking, "Oh, this is his chance, right? He's he's gonna shine." I don't know why I would think that because he sucks and it's boring, but whatever. I thought he had something, right? Uh, so I put him on the show, and at the time, uh, Nick made a revelation that Jaden tried to kiss him after a showing of Spider Man. Now at the time. Of course, I was anti-Nick, and I was on that warpath and everything, and I was like, oh, that's not true, and, you know, I still admit, admitted that Jaden lost, and I, eventually I admitted that a lot more fully, uh, which <laughs> pissed some people off, by the way, uh, which I don't give a fuck about, um, but at the time, I thought that was something that Nick just threw out there uh, as a fake story to kind of throw Jaden off, uh, but I don't think that anymore, actually. I think that Jaden actually did try to kiss him. 
him after Spider-Man. And I think that Jaden is a uh, scorned, uh, unrequited love is what they call it. Um, that he actually did want to be in a uh, gay relationship with Nick Fuentes, and Nick didn't want that. And that that is what you see with this level of obsession for years and years and years, is the unrequited love from a homosexual who wanted somebody who was not a homosexual. I mean, even when I was friends with Judas, there was never a moment of doubt that that story was true. Never for one moment did I doubt that uh, Judas did, in fact, uh, make an attempt on Nick's lips. They did go in for the kiss. Um, and is anybody really surprised? You look at the guy, you know, he does like this, like, fake, like, oh, it's a guy. He, he's a, you're a total pussy, bro. And like, nobody takes you seriously. What this bozo doesn't realize is the only reason why the A-Logs haven't gone for him yet is because he is a tool for them. Everything, like all, all the propaganda, all the bullshit, all the fake, fake news and lies that they pump out on you and me all day long, it all filters through him. Like, he's basically their voice. So as long as you are a useful idiot for them, they're, they're going to tolerate you. Sure. They're going to tolerate you. They're going to put up with you. But And we've all seen say, the DMs. He's scared shitless of the A-Logs. He is. He is. He admitted it. I put that out there. He admitted that he's terrified. And that's also, that's the reason why he betrayed me. Because he basically saw that uh, that these people were starting to turn on me. And what does he do? Like, well, we know that Judas ain't a real nigga. Because a real nigga is going to get his boys back in a situation like that. But what did Judas do? He tucked his tail between his legs, and he was like, Oh, 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 Literally, what he did was he went to Kinochet's timeline and just verbatim read every fucking tweet that Kinochet made about me that day. That's literally what you did. And he's going to respond to this and he's going to go, I had your back. I had your back. Everybody, when that stream happened, everybody in my chat was like, yo, are you seeing this right now? He totally, totally turned his back on me. Everybody saw what he did, well, and, and, and while he while he was defending me, yeah, defending me by uh, repeating verbatim the talking points of my enemies, you fucking moron. Yeah, the only back he ever wanted was Nick Fuentes' backside. <laughs> that's that's all he ever wanted. And I remember at the time, and I, I guess I was just blinded by you know the rage or whatever. Um, you know, I was like, no, nah, there's no way. But the more I think about it, and just how he's comported himself for two years straight now, uh, I really do truly think he is a homosexual. And we know about Ultros and all that. Is it really that right. big a leap to make uh, that it is a case of unrequited love? With, between him and Nick Fuentes, and Nick was just like, no, man, I'm like, what the fuck? What are you doing? Like, what the fuck? Uh, and then that's where the animosity really started. That's where the fallout really started. Uh, because it is! Right? Like, the timeline fits, too! Right? It makes perfect sense. I, I, don't, I don't see what else the explanation would be. Like, look, even if you had your differences with Nick, yeah, so did I at one point in time, they get the fuck over it. It's like it's just it's gotten so pathetic by now. Unless, as you're saying, you know what you're saying is true, and the reason why he cannot move on is because he is, uh, you know, sexually attracted to Nick, and you know all they're doing is projecting with all this. Well, it's for money and, uh, too, right? But I actually shit. think I actually think it's the unrequited love more than anything else. Uh, but of course, for money also, yeah. But uh, no, I think it's because he got turned down with his homosexual advances, uh, and it really broke him. Uh, and if you notice that's, uh, if you know the timeline, that's when he started kind of, you know, uh, getting more ostracized from the Groypers, and he was at APAC 3, and so was I, but he was already on the outs. I didn't know that at the time, right? Uh, but he was already on the outs. Uh, and the timeline fits, uh, because the Spider-Man movie, I think, had come out in the fall or before that, right? Uh, and so the timeline completely fits with everything. 
Oh yeah, it, it fits in perfectly. It, it fits in like a puzzle. It just just slides in perfectly like a glove, which is exactly what uh, Judas wished Nick would do to him. But it never, <laughs> never happened. Unfortunately, never came to be. Uh, uh, I don't Poor know, guy. man. I, I didn't. I didn't believe it at first, but the more I thought about it uh, over the months uh, and just how he's comported himself. Um, I actually think it's, I actually think it's true. Uh, now here's a super chat. Corn pop the bad dude uh, once sent five dollars on Rumble. He said maybe, maybe he wasn't gay enough. Maybe he wasn't gay enough for Nick. I don't think so. I actually believe I actually <laughs> believe Nick. And then the video Kino she Kino she put out the other day uh, that they were all frothing over and said Nick was flirting with these guys. He's actually not flirting. He's not flirting. No, with it's, the people it's at all. hard. I watched it's, the video. Watched he was it. not flirting. He wasn't flirting. At all. No, he wasn't. Now, he did drop he did, the Yay. The big part of the story was him talking about being with Yay. Like, that was the actual headline of the story. And then they tried to spin this false narrative that he's flirting with these guys and this and that and the other. And that's not what happens at all in the video. I watched the video. And this is not me Nick sucking, which some will say. I watched the fucking video. And he wasn't flirting. Now, the one guy was trying even... to flirt, but he rejected that flat out. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, that was, it, that was totally, if you watch the video, like, they didn't know who Nick was, he steps outside, you know, this, this, like, he's surrounded by these four dudes, doesn't know them, they have a camera, they're filming him, he doesn't know, like, it was just an awkward situation that he was in, there was, there's no possible interpretation of that, that can be, and they, they know, they know it's fucking fake and retarded, but they just, I, I what else are they going to say about him? Are they going to say that he's unsuccessful? Are they going to say that his movement is dying? Are they going to say that his influence is shrinking? Are they going to say that he's uh, he's going broke? They can't say any of that stuff that would actually like matter, stuff that would actually be damaging if true. So instead, they're still pushing the greatest hits from like three years ago. They're still pushing the gay, gay, Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs was thoroughly... And, and totally debunked. Like, it's completely and utterly fake. And actually, funnily enough, it was debunked on Kiwi Farms. And that debunk is a real one. Under, unlike the Victor Sharp debunk, the, the, you know, the Mr. Krabs debunk, that's actually legitimate. They actually proved, because what happened was Nick had, like, a Snapchat at the time or an Instagram account at the time that, like, it was like a burner account that a lot of people didn't know about. And he posted a picture of, like, some pizza. And this fake Twitter account... They also posted the same picture of that pizza, but they cropped it in a way where the um, like the Instagram or Snapchat overlay yeah. was re- so ba- so basically like the, uh, the the border, the entire border of the image was cropped in a way that they that they edited out the overlay, which would reveal that it was taken from Nick's Instagram. So. Like that right there is a detail that a lot of people don't know and they've never seen. But that it's like it just opened and shut. Uh, uh, you know, it was a get out. It got debunked, and they're still now they got like George Santos in their corner. You went, gay, you went from Gabe Hoffman to George Santos. Like this is like the A team you're you're throwing together here. What the fuck is going on? Actually and, Jewish. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> to get back to a point. <laughs> For those who don't know, Santos lied to, about being a Jew. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. To get back to what you were saying earlier, like, at the end of the day, what is important to us? You know, what is important to us? It's the political cause. And, you know, what is Nick? What is America first? What is he pushing towards versus what is Judas pushing towards? Judas. Pino Casino, Pino Casino, they're clowns. But all all these people who, like, what are you guys ultimately, at the end of the day, pushing towards? You are trying to take out the most influential dissident right winger out there by far. I mean, he was in a Twitter space last week with Andrew Tate, with Alex Jones, and literally he's the most influential people on fucking planet Earth. And this is the guy you're trying to take down? Like, it doesn't make sense. (laughs) And and, And there truly is, I know Nick used to say this all the time, truly there's nobody else. Nobody else has stepped up to the plate. Like, if not Nick, then who? And people don't want to hear this and, you know, all the ball washing, not ball washing. It's just the facts. Like, you know, especially now that he's back on Twitter, forget about it. It, 
it, oh, it's, it's, and did you see how desperate they were to keep him off Twitter? By the way, uh, the A logs just uh, were every time it would get mentioned, they would throw all this stuff out there. No, you can't let him back. You can't let him back. You can't let him back because they knew what would happen as soon as he got back. It would blow yeah. the fuck up, uh, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, and Elon, to his credit, I couldn't even believe it. The Groppers bullied Elon Musk into putting this back on Twitter. It's unbelievable when you think about it. They bullied the richest man in the world by <laughs> not literally calling him a shabos goy. They literally <laughs> called him a shabos goy. And, I, and, and, and he put Nick on because they called him a shabos goy. That's literally what happened. Dad. Honestly, when I saw that, it's like they like this this groiper. Uh, uh, wasn't he Goya Bean Groiper? I think yes. called Elon Musk a shadow's boy. Did. Elon Musk, in response, was like, "All right, I'll bring him back." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he oh, couldn't make it up, that, right? Like, I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> I know, man. It's 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 truly unbelievable. Like it still doesn't feel real because, as far as I knew, Nick was never like that was an impossibility. Even too. with Elon Musk, you know, I thought there was a very, very, very strong likelihood that he would never get his account back. And honestly, like that's only you know been the biggest thing. Milo Yiannopoulos told me personally that he talked to Elon Musk and that the Groypers were all going to get banned from Twitter and that Nick would never be allowed on Twitter. Milo Yiannopoulos told me that personally. Personally. Uh, and that's where that story came from last summer. And he told me that, mm. at, and he was the source for that story. Now, turns out that was bullshit, uh, obviously. Mm. Now, maybe it was true at the time. I don't know. Um, but the fact that Elon got bullied <laughs> by Groypers literally calling him a Shabos Goy. And then put Goya it being Groyper. It's unbelievable. <laughs> How is this It is. And honestly... And and honestly, I see it as a good thing because um, I see it as, as a great thing because you know every time he posts, he gets a shitload of attention. Who is fighting harder against Zionist control than he is? Absolute, or who's getting more attention at least for it? You know, like yeah. the guy, he's absolute. And you know, I, I hate to keep I hate to keep uh, qualifying all of this by saying I'm not wall washing, but at the same time, I really I just don't give a fuck. Like they're gonna they're gonna call me that no matter what I say or do. So. It, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, these are the facts. He's killing it. I'm glad to see him killing it. I'm glad that it makes them see it. And I'm glad that there's nothing they can do to, uh, like, they're, they're totally impotent. They, they've tried it all. It, it's just over. And that's why they spend all their time and, and effort on me. Because, like, the guy with the stream in a year, that's why they, they focus on me instead. Because they know Nick is a total lost cause. And me, they can maybe stop streaming for another few months. Which is the greatest thing they've ever accomplished, basically. Yeah, well, and there's that's the other thing. It's just not there's no hope. You're not. It's it's a losing battle. Um, just do something else. But you know, somebody like Judas, he can't do anything else. Ted, he like, can't. like he he's can't. incapable. Of, he's not an entertainer. He's not a showman. He can't do any interviews. He doesn't do any call-ins. He doesn't host any debates. He hosted one accidental debate where I beat those two <laughs> fucking crackhead Canadians two on one. Uh, and while he was biased as fuck, by the way, as the moderator. Um, but like he can't do any other content. What sit there and play games in silence while he mumbles to his twink audience? Like I mean, um, and not all twink. You know, some people watch. I'm not insulting his whole entire audience, uh, but there's definitely some some weird vibes from some of them. I'll just say, um, right? Um, and so yeah, lots of uh, lots of like lowly con enjoyers in that audience. Yeah, and I know. Look, there's some people that watch all this stuff. You know, Waffins. I know he watches all these shows. I see him in all these chats. Some people are just sector enjoyers, right? Uh, and they go through all the shows, and they just like the back and forth. It's like pro wrestling. It's like a different wrestling federation, right? You might like one federation more than the other, but you watch all wrestling, right? And if there's good wrestling going on, you'll turn on the fucking channel. Uh, yeah. And that's how a lot of people are, and I don't begrudge those people at all. Um, actually, that's kind of the way it should be uh, in reality. But uh, here, hold on. Let me... Please ask RPG if he thinks that Twitter space with Nick. All right, hold on, wait, wait, let, let me skip these, and Waffen's just sent another one in, too. And again, that's why I threw well, the I, I'm not trying to insult everybody who, who watches him, but there's just some some of the some of the energy is a little, from some of them, it's just a little, 
strange, right? And then you have just your second drawers who watch everything. And I completely right, understand right. that as a wrestling fan. It's like, well, if there's, if there's good if there's good wrestling going on, you know, uh, I don't give a fuck if it's in WWE or AEW or whatever. If it's a good match, I want to see it. Uh, and so that's I understand that mentality too. Uh, but anyway, uh, Waffen sent in another cooking video that they've been playing in the background. But uh, Groyper sent this in. And it's a question. If you have any questions, get them in because I kept them for two and a half hours. I'm not going to keep them too much longer. Uh, maybe 15 more minutes or, t or so if he's got the time, uh, 15, 20 minutes, because we really have just went over a ton here in this uh, interview. Uh, I think I've done a pretty good job. I like to think so. Uh, Groper says, please ask RPG if he thinks that Twitter space with Nick and the fake Elon was actually the real Elon. Uh, that's a good question. Um, so I actually, it's actually funny because my suspicion was that it wasn't actually Elon Musk, and this might sound crazy, but it sounded to me like it was a highly sophisticated artificial intelligence, because, like, that is Elon Musk's voice. That is not someone who sounds like Elon Musk. That is literally, like, the left. The left is trademark. That's not something that I, that I believe can be imitated. And whenever, whenever Nick would interact with uh, Adrian Dittman, the responses were just like a little bit off, you know, kind of when you talk to Siri or you talk to ChatGPT yeah. and like there's something that's a little bit off about it. Everything, or most of what he was saying, it, it just felt a little bit off to me. So, and it's funny because that was my initial suspicion. And then like a few days later during one of his streams, he actually said that he wasn't sure it was the real Elon or a highly sophisticated AI. So it was funny that we both kind of thought the same thing on that, but I don't think it was Elon. Another reason why I don't think it was Elon is because if it was Elon, how come nobody in the press, like, if Elon Musk spoke to Nick Fuentes, why didn't anybody in the press cover that? Yeah. Right, right. Like, the fact that CNN, New York Times, all these publications uh, totally ignored it, that, to me, was also a strong indicator that it wasn't actually Elon Musk. Yeah, I, I, what did you think, Ralph? I don't think it was him, no. Um, yeah. And I think Elon, at this point, uh, would just go in there straight up if he wanted to talk to him. Honestly, I mean, he's talked to Alex Jones, talked to a lot of different people uh, at this point, controversial people, Andrew Tate, etc. Um, now, maybe not Fuentes level controversial, but um, you know, Elon kind of put his nuts up on the table a little bit. So I, I, I think if if he was going to do that, um, he would just go in there on his own. Um, that's kind of my thoughts on on Elon at this point. Um, and I, have to I love the guy. I, 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 to I always got a lot of. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with everything, from, but I, I have to give him credit. He's 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 brought the place back to the arena it was meant to be, uh, and he banned Keena Gay as well. So I have to give him big ah, yes, for he as did. well. <laughs> More Keena what Gay. a king! <laughs> what a king! <laughs> what a king! Now, what do you think about um, how things have opened up over the last year or so? With Twitter, just, yeah, just with Twitter in general, yeah, and 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 um, I guess the pushback against Zionism specifically since October seventh. Um, I think that honestly, I'm surprised that things have shifted as quickly as they have. Like as far as the Overton window is concerned, I just think that the uh, the Jews they overplayed their hand. It has become so apparent what's going on that um, people are finally starting to, you know, they're starting to say enough is enough. You know, these Jews are out of control. Um, you know. Um, although one thing I will say, I guess, is when it comes to like these, um, all these campus protests, um, I do agree with like what Nick has been saying and like what a lot of dissidents have been saying, um, that there's like kind of like a psyop going on there. And like a lot of these protesters are actually like Jewish Zionists who are camouflaging as like white college frat bros that like that is absolutely happening. And that could even be like the majority of what's at play there. But I also do think that maybe this is like a cringe take, but I also do think that like there are because not everybody is as tapped into the stuff as we are. Like right. the sphere is very hyper political. Yes. And like the average college kid might not even know what the word Zionism means. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I, I think there is maybe some uh, like friendly fire going on there where not I, I do think that a lot of these kids like these guys they're they're sincerely like i think the way i put it is that they are their intentions are good you know like they don't realize that they are doing 
the bidding of the Jews in protesting these left wing, uh, you know, radicals on the college campuses. So basically what I'm saying is I do think that there's some like friendly fire going on there. I do think like that there are some legitimately you're just conservative, conservative frat bros who like hate leftists and are, you know, going out there to kind of like counter protest these people who are, um, I don't know, man. Cause like, there's a lot of, I, I've seen a lot of people who are like supporting the protests because it, it's basically like the enemy of my enemy is my friend type situation. And I, I totally understand that. And I'm not going to counter signal it too hard because I do like ultimately agree that that is, that is like the appropriate, um, like, tactical approach to take. But at the same time, like, on a on a guttural level, I cannot support these people. Like I, I know who they are, and it is true, even though it's like a cringe boomer talking point. It is true that like these people are anti-white, they are anti-American, they are um, like they are the same people that were protesting for George Floyd. They are the same people from the BLM pro. Like every single time there is a wave of protests, it's literally the same people, regardless of the issue at, at play. So, um, but at the same time, I do understand the, the, like the rhetoric, um, and how that is the, like the tactical response to what's going on there. So I don't know. Now I'm trying to think, first off, if you have any super chat questions that you've really been wanting to get in, uh, for, yeah, guys, let's just get them in now because we've because been going pretty fast. I don't know when I'm going to do another stream. Yeah. I, we don't know when we're going to hear from him again. Um, how, l let me ask you, I'll do one of my Larry King questions here. Um, <laughs> how, how re how relaxing has it been? Uh, to to be out of these. Uh, I mean, you're still on Twitter talking shit here and there, but to mostly be out of this on a fire. Uh, and you said your life's going a lot better, and you're 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 into some things that um you might have gotten stuck into this for another couple of years, and that your life has um went into a, a much better direction uh, without getting into sp specifics. Obviously, I know why. Um, <laughs> but just mentally, um, do you feel better? Yeah, I mean, what happened was it really, it really ended up having a silver lining where I, it, it totally motivated me to figure out, okay, like, what's the next step here? Because as far as the financials go, um, you know, when I was streaming, like, even when things were going good, and I put this out there before, even when things were going well, I was never making a ton of money through streaming. Like, the way streaming works is you start off with zero viewers. And then you get your first viewer, right? And that's like the biggest deal in the world. Then you get 10 viewers, then you get 100, you know, 20, 50, 70. Yes. Like little by little you build up, right. right? And, but even with 100 viewers, like you're not making a lot of money. Like you might not even be making minimum wage if you only have 100 viewers, you know, um, 200 viewers. I think, I think towards the end I had like three, 400 viewers. Like that was the range that I was in. Most of them were like, at that point, they were just hate watching. Yes. But even when they weren't, you know, I was never making a ton of money through streaming. But at the same time, I thought that I was, you know, grinding. I was grinding towards the point where, you know, it would turn a corner and it would become a, you know, it would actually become like a uh, successful venture. It never got to that point. And I'm not afraid to admit that. I'm not afraid to, it's just, it's just obvious, right? Like, I'm not going to fucking quote and be like, oh, but, but, but I gave it my all. I put myself out there, which is not an easy thing to do. And it's also kind of like counter to like, to, to me, a big part of streaming was, you know, putting myself out there, which is not something I'm normally a hundred percent comfortable with, right. but I wanted, I wanted to kind of like use it as like a, as like a chat, as like a channel to, you know, like, like for personal growth, not to sound like gay or cringe, but you know, I was, I was putting myself out there in a way that I had never done before. And, um, you know, so there were a lot of good things that came out of it, but as far as the financials go, like, uh, the stream never got to a point for, although it was getting to that point, it never got to that point. And then with the way things ended for me to have to like build things back up, it, it really almost knocked me down back to, back to like, you know, square zero. So to have to, from that point, build things back up i was like you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna call it quits right because at some at some point like it's not that i was in denial it's just 
I was like, this just is not the path for me. You know, I, I tried, at least I can say I tried, but this is not the path for me in life. I'm better suited somewhere else. So it ended up giving me the motivation where it's like, okay, well, I got to figure something out because I was not making a lot then, and now I'm not making anything, which was, which was, by the way, the, the point of it all, right? Like the reason why they did everything that they did to me was yes. they were hoping they could financially ruin me. So it's like, and okay, that's what I they did to me. Out. That's what they did to me too, to try to ruin my life. Yes. 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 And, you know, really, it put me in a position where it's like, okay, I got to figure this out, right? I got to come up with something, and I got to come up with something fast because uh, needed income. And, you know, like I said, it's not something I could talk about today, but it is something right. that I'm very much looking forward to sharing with people because it's actually, um, I, I don't even want to, like, I don't want to speak in general terms. But, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah don't. But, but things are going very better than ever. Um, and... That's really that's really the most that I can say, unfortunately. But I do look forward to the day where you know, because I, I do think it's a pretty epic like comeback story. Um, so it'll be great to share when I can. But for now, um, yeah. So yeah, let's get this, guys. Yeah, and, and sometimes you need to be like you need to be you need to have your feet in the fire to figure out shit in life. You know, like sometimes you could be stuck in the mud. You're you're not sure what to do, what next step to take, and then. Um, you know, coming face to face with with that type of um, that type of predicament or whatever, you know, it ends up being the best thing for you because, like, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be where I am now. So now, um, you know, I've been blessed because my show's been on the air for for ten years, uh, and in a big way, it's been on the air for six years, uh, and so. Numbers fluctuate, you know, I've had thousands and thousands, I've had 200, I've had 300, we have 700 today. I'm blessed because I have long-term supporters who have watched me for years and years and years and years, right? So I can get by and, and make a living uh, really with a, with a lower number, covering anything, but it doesn't have to be a thousand viewers watching, right? It could be 300. It could be 400. Uh, and I can still make a living off of it because I have dedicated people who have spent a lot of their life listening to me, right? And they identify with me. Maybe they don't agree with everything, uh, of course, uh, that I've said or done, uh, but I've been a, a major part of their of their life uh, for so long that they want to see that keep going. Uh, and for you, you were you were starting from scratch. Now, I started from scratch, too, uh, but I, I had a lot more built up, you know what I mean, uh, for years and years and years, and it'd be really hard to take me out completely. Uh, as they've seen, right? They can't. Uh, they can't because you, you know why. At the end of the day, you have something that they can't take from you, and that's the fact that you're talented. You are a talented broadcaster. Like you know, people think that broadcasting is easy. Okay, well, if you're listening right now and you think it's so easy, you think you can do what Ralph does, do it. What's stopping you? What's stopping you from you know quitting your nine to five and doing what Ralph does? Trust me, it's a lot harder than meets the eye. You know, most people who try to get into streaming will fail. That's just, those are just the facts. Those are just how the numbers bear out. Like only a very, very small percentage of people who get into streaming have any success with it. So, you know, the one thing they can never take away from you is the fact that you are an extremely talented and competent broadcaster. And those are just the facts. Like you are like, you know, you're very good at conversation. You're very good at interviews. You have a whole range of like, like the show is always different. I'm not just saying, you know, well, uh, you're, you're sucking it off. I'm not just saying that because I, I don't need to. Like, I don't need to do that. It's just the facts. Like, and, and everybody knows it. That's why even the hate watchers, they can watch your stream for hours on end every single day because they find it entertaining too. They'll never admit it, but it's, it's, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here. And, you know, your name is one that people are familiar with. The kill stream, iconic. Everybody knows that name. And, um, yeah, so like, you were able to achieve a level of success because you have that broadcasting talent. Now, me, on the other hand, I don't have that talent. Okay? You know, like, you I'm sound, not, you sound I'm, a little short, I think. I, a lot of people in chat miss you. I've seen a lot of comments uh, since you've been on the show. You might be selling yourself a little bit short there, I think. Um, the thing is, is I'm not, I'm not, 
I am a very realistic person, and I am totally like capable of acknowledging who I am and what I bring to the table. It's not to say that I can't do a stream at all, but at the same time, I was never going to be like PewDiePie. I was never going to be XQC, you know? I maybe could have found like a pocket of success that was good enough for me, but at the same time, you know, I'm not um, like, like the people who are, who are very successful, they tend to be uh, extroverted or extremely extroverted, and that's not me. You know, I, for the most part, I'm somebody who kind of like keeps to. Um, I like to keep to myself. I'm like a. That's just like the way that I am. And you see these really, really big streamers, and they're like, you know, they're. I don't know. They're they're like super extroverted, and um, you know, that's just not the the kind of person that I am. And they do enjoy like conversations like this one. But, um, yeah, so I'm not trying to sell myself short. I'm just saying that, like, um, I, I know who I am. I know what I bring to the table. I'm not under any, you know, delusions. But I, I, I try to put myself out there. I try to make it work. I gave it a shot. Um, um, it didn't work out the way that I originally hoped that it would. But now I'm in a – because I did all that, I am – like, I, I needed to do all of that to get to where I am right now, you know. So that's that – life is funny like that. But sometimes you need to go through those types of uh, life's about know, stages. Scenarios. It's about stages. It's about seasons, uh, and uh, seasons change, right? Uh, yeah. And if you don't change along with it, um, you're fucked. <laughs> I don't know how else to say. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, like, so. would it be better? Would it be better if I was just in denial and I just kept the stream going even though it wasn't working out? I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and wasting my time or, you know, was the better move to... And, and by the way, as far as the stream goes, for those who are wondering, um, you know, I do actually plan on bringing the stream back. It, it's not going to be a daily stream. I don't have the time for that anymore. But, um, you know, even if I could if I could touch base with my, my followers, if I could touch base with them, even if it's once a month, you know, right. I think it is possible to do a stream. Like, that's what Medicare used to do. And there's a lot of other examples of people who don't stream daily. So um, that's what I would like to do. That is that is the goal. That is what I'm striving towards. I am going to, of course, have the, uh, the the Susie Paluzzi, which I'm very much looking forward to. And it's, it's pretty now, much. Is that the bitch you wrote pretty, your, is that who you were talking about earlier? Uh, I don't know the reference there, or you don't want to give that away. Yeah, no, no. Her name is uh, Susan Benazuski. That's the uh, communist that wrote my thread on Okay, Cuba that's what I tools. thought. I just didn't know for sure. That's just what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I call her Susie. You know, they like to call me Teddy, so I like to call her Susie. And uh, we're going to do a full expose on her and who she's connected to and the people that she's, uh, you know, she was working with. And be a lot of familiar faces and names that are going to come up during that one. So we will... Uh, we will get to that. There, there's no, there's no um, planned date for it yet, but it's, uh, it's in the works. Coming soon. Coming soon to a computer screen or mobile device near you. Uh, now, let's see. Uh, I'm not gonna read that one because, well, you know what? I, I, I will read that. You know, because uh, it's an anti uh, chat, and I want to address it as well. He says. Sure. How does it feel to have the? Let me see. Let me read. How does it feel to have the dick of people who dox and harass your family in your throat because they're semi-popular on Twitter? You slimy worm faggot. That's what he said. Uh, well, isn't isn't that what I would be doing if I uh, like if I switched teams, right? Like if <laughs> I was if I was uh, buddies with Kino Faggot, Gisela Pedos, Adam Daly, they yeah. check my like. That's the thing. When you say people who did this, and what did you do, fucker? What did you and all your people? You did the exact same shit, and you guys did it way, way, way worse. By the way, they did and 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 just stole my material. First thing, but anyway, go ahead. (laughs) I'm 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 sorry, but they did it. They did it worse, and they did it for for worse reasons. Because as I said earlier, the reason why Nick and Co. The reason why that happened is because we were feuding. We were enemies at yes. the time. So it's like, okay, they doxed me. 
doesn't make it right, but there's an actual un an understandable reason for why that happened. Even if it's wrong, it's like, I get why that happened. Like, I'll use uh, you know, George Floyd as an example, right? Like, should George Floyd have been killed? Maybe, maybe not, but I get why it happened. I understand why yes. that interaction between George Floyd and Derek Chauvin ended in his death because he was, well, I, I don't want to be explicit, but we all we all know why that happened. It's the same thing with, you know, Nick, the, the, the feud that I have with you, I know why you did and said the things that you said about me, vice versa. You know why I said things. When it comes to Judas, what is Judas's reason for all of that? The Kino Casino? What's their, oh, oh their reason, well, their they, reason they, they, they is because through. I was attacking them. That never even happened. So their reason for coming after me was first because I attacked them, which didn't happen, and then second because it's funny, right? So, so the Brippers were attacking me because I was an adversary to their political movement and politics is dirty. Politics is real dirty, and that's the way it goes. Like, you think this is bad? Uh, imagine what it's like. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You think this, this shit's bad? Imagine what it's like in the big leagues, okay? So it's like, after everything went down, it made me realize, because of you, because of whoever left that super chat and the people that think like you, think like you, you are the ones who brought that epiphany upon me. You are the ones who gave me a perception that I never had or, or interpretation of events that I never saw. And then when it comes to Kino you know, Casino, Judas, all these snakes and rats, what was their reason for doing it? Their reason is because it was funny. That's the reason. Okay, well, if that's the reason you choose, then go ahead. But if I have to, you know, if I have to pick a side here, it's a... Uh, pretty clear which side is the correct one and the key difference is i stab you in the front and they stab you in the back yes that's the key yes difference. well and said that's, and that's yep. that's just the calm that's just the capsule right there yeah uh, encapsulated yep. i stabbed you in the front they stabbed you in the back now this is a guy and he talked about it earlier and i said a lot of things about his family uh and he said things about uh, my dead mother and he apologized for that and I apologize for the things I said about his family earlier um, but Anonymous you know hold on I'm going to skip this because I, I, I just want to finish this thought and I'll read that out next um, but you know I understand why those things were said about my mother right I understand because I was going at this I was going at Ted hardcore hardcore every single day i understand why he said what he said now normally would i be able to get past something like that no mate probably not right but it was a battle it was a, a nasty feud and we were fighting head on boom 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 like this while he got stabbed in the back like caesar you know what i mean that's what happened uh they set him up uh, he was part of their team, and he got turned on by, by his own allies, whereas we were on opposite sides fighting, uh, and now we're not. And uh, it turns out uh, you were highly prescient about a lot of things, and we had a conversation about Judas uh, in private before um, they even all turned on me and everything, and, he said, and you said, watch your back. He said, watch your back, because it's, it's coming. And don't trust this guy, and don't trust these people, uh, because it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, yeah, I don't know, you know, da, da da da. And then I went and looked back in September when I started, you know, changing my thought patterns, right? Uh, and I was like, every single thing this guy said was true, uh, and I should have seen it coming. And I've been in the business long enough that I should have known. Like, why, you know, these gaggle of retards, like these gaggle of ineffectual losers. Like, why would I ever try to? What was the thought process going through my mind to think that that type of coalition was ever going to work uh, with a bunch of snakes and retards who never accomplished anything in their life? Uh, I mean. That was just you know it is you you knew you better you knew better I knew better but I was just go ahead you knew better but you just get sucked into these things you know yes. like one thing leads to another and before you know it you're in the thick of it and you're doing shit that like you know later on you'll come to regret um, but the thing is is it's like you know 
you knew, and I'm not saying that in a way where I'm like, uh, you know, um, like lecturing you or anything, but you knew, and then eventually it came out, and you were like, oh, okay, yeah, actually, you know, this is really the the way these people operate. Yeah. Um, now, getting back to the super chat real quick, so, you know, another point that I want to make here is it's like, you know, they talk about how, oh, you already doxed. Okay, because I was already doxed, that gives these people that are supposed to be my allies, that gives them permission to put my docs under a, my, uh, a magnifying glass. Like, it doesn't, the thing is, is you want me to hate Nick and the Gripers for the rest of my life because of what they did to me, then how, how should I feel about you? How should I feel about you? You know what I'm saying? Like, they did everything that was done to me times 10 times 100, and then they're going to fault me for having a, a change of heart and a change of mind after realizing what I was, the, the, who I was dealing with all along? You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I don't want to hear it. Go fuck yourself. Suck my dick. By the way, goal broken. Uh, Let's go. Super Chat, 36 straight shows, and I will I will read this out because it's pretty good. Dan Bigfoot says, Feaser got Caesared. Uh, and uh, it's true. that's exactly what happened. Uh, and there's a total there's a total difference between uh, you know two armies going against each other and then uh, you know getting fragged. I don't know if people know what fragging is, but uh, in the Vietnam War, um, a lot of times. Um, uh, U.S. soldiers would kill uh, their commanding officers uh, because of whatever reason, some bullshit mission they'd send them on or they didn't like what they were doing by th throwing a grenade in their fucking tent while they were asleep. Uh, and people don't talk about this very much. Um, but that's, uh, you know, friendly fire, right? Um, and you And you got fragged, right? They, they threw a grenade into your own tent. Uh, and so... Anyway, there's a couple super chats, and I'll read these out, and then I'll, I'll let you get out of here. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you get some final words in before, but uh, Waffen sure, says, sure. Uh, RPG, will there be a stream in the future? I think he said, you already said there will be, but you can answer that again if you want. Yeah, yeah, so um, I did answer it, but yeah, there will be a stream. <laughs> um, right now, it's kind of up in the air when exactly that's going to be. But um, the first stream back is going to be the Susie Paloozie, where I'm going to dive uh, deeper into a lot of topics that me and Ralph hit today. And also, I'm going to get into some topics that we didn't get the chance to uh, touch on. So don't know when that will be, but keep an eye out for it. All right. Now, uh, let me also uh, put the extendo on the screen now since we... And honestly, today we still have Patrick Howley. I didn't even know that this was totally unplanned. I just messaged, I just messaged Ted, and I was like, "Man, today's the day. Let's do it." Like, I, I just, I just felt right, uh, and it was the right call. I have, I, hey, I have an instinct for the business uh, sometimes, and I was like, "You know what? Today's the day. This is when it needs to fucking happen." Um, all right, now hopefully that'll update on the extendo. But we smashed the main goal. Uh, I'll mess with it again if it doesn't update. Uh, yeah, there it goes. Extendo. A big extendo today because I think this was a huge explosive that the sector lovers, haters, everybody's been wanting to hear this for a whole fucking year. And you got to see it live today on the one and only fucking kill stream. There's nobody else in this whole fucking sector from the top on down who does it like I do it. And there's a reason for that. Now, uh... Anonymous says, great to see you again, RPG. We missed you. Which one of the songs we made about you is your favorite, is what he said. They made a lot of parody songs about you. Did you like any of them? I guess. Um, so I, I know nobody is going to believe this, but I have not watched one Laughing. second of any of the anti-content that has been made about me. And, that's and the, thing, the, the thing about all of that is, um, like, I, like the, what was the point, right? Like, yes. why... Why would I watch something that's going to make me feel bad? You know, it's like, why am I going to watch your video? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, this is obviously going to be a video shitting on me. And I know there's a lot of people who, like, it, it's hard not to. Don't get me wrong. Like, when people are bad-mouthing you, it's hard not to seek it out. But, sure. uh, like, there's a reason why I have all these to. people. <laughs> it, it, it's hard. It is hard. But um, at the same time, like. You can like, get addicted to it. Uh, and, but it's much better for your mindset not to ingest that content. 
yeah, so like I realized very, very early on in my streaming career that like I did not want to seek that stuff out. And also, you know, as far as like my blocking policy on Twitter goes, I know a lot of the, uh, the A logs, they don't like a block ABIM. But it's like, okay, it's like, it's just, I, I, you, you don't have the right to say whatever the fuck you want to me. And like, I just have to let you do that unbridled. Like, how, actually, how about, um, you go fuck yourself, you know? Cause ultimately what these people want more than anything when it comes to Twitter is they just want to, you know, they just want to like, like, like curse us out and like call us what, you know, they just want to call us names and shit on us and our replies all day long. It's like, I'm actually, I'm going to take that away from you. I know you can't do that. So it's just, um, it's just who needs that negativity, you know? Who needs the negativity? So these people they make songs about me. Uh, I never have listened to or watched a single one, and yeah, I don't blame you. And I think that's the right call. Um, I don't. I'm far more. Not just the songs, terrible. by the way. Not not just the songs, by the way. Like the any any video that any even the streams, even the streams. I have not watched one second of Kino Casino. I have not watched one second of Judas's stream. I have not watched any of the songs. I have not watched any of the videos these psychopaths have made. Um, people tell me, people say, oh, hey, they're doxing your, your parents in this one. Oh, hey, they're doxing your, your home in this one. You know, so, so I, I hear um, like what they're doing to me, and I'm aware of what they're doing to me. And they claim, oh, they're just jokingly doxing your parents. Oh, they're just jokingly doxing your location, right? Because that's like a really funny joke is when you post somebody's uh, address on the internet. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so I, it was so I, funny. <laughs> anyway, yeah, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now, he earned that, by the way, you know, with the sneak attack in Lisbon. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, no, I just um, I never watched any of them, and I don't plan on it. And well, you know what? Yeah, I'll tell you a little secret about me. I don't, it, unless somebody sends me a clip uh, and says you have to see this or whatever, they said this, uh, I'll see that. I don't watch any live content say that's it, negative say. about me at all, but I am far more likely to read negative content about me because I'm actually a, a reader. Uh, I prefer reading more than anything else. So sometimes I can get addicted to reading uh, the negative content. But as far as watching it, I, I, I don't. And actually, it's a weakness. Oh, that's another thing. That's another yes. thing. Yeah, no, it is really hard, and I don't fault you for it. Um, like, so when they first started writing about me on Keely Farms, like, I would say, like, I read the first three pages. And, like, that's where I stopped because I was like, okay, like, these are just, like, deranged yes. seizers who are making shit up about me. And it got to the point where it's like, like, what am I getting out of this, right? It takes like, time out of your day, too. It takes it really, yeah, it, it, yeah. Exactly. Like, it just brings down your mood, and now you're feeling like shit. And it's like, you know, this is something that doesn't make me feel good. Then why am I going to, um, you know, indulge myself in that? So but at the same time, you know, I can relate to what you're saying when you say sometimes, uh, you know, it gets the best of you. Um, I, I do understand that. Um, but there's a reason why I have the mobile block on Twitter, why I don't read Kiwi Farms, I don't watch the videos, because I'm just trying to block that out as much as possible so that I can, you know, because why, like, why should I let these people, um, you know, ruin my spirits? I'm just trying to, you know, do my own thing. I'm tr I've been trying to move on with my life. You know, they're going to say, oh, he's trying to move on, then why is he calling into the kill stream? You know, there have been long stretches of time where I wasn't engaging with this stuff at all, and the attacks did not relent even a little bit. So if you do do something, they say, oh, well, you know, if you do respond, if you do engage, then they blame you for it. And then if you don't for a very long period of time, but then eventually you do, as soon as you respond, they'll say, oh, you responded. So everything, you know, all the trash talk that we've been doing for the last three months. So it, you know, you're better off ignoring it. I try my best to ignore it. This was needed, though. Shit. This was needed, though. Uh, because 100%. This right here was very much needed, uh, I think, for you, Cathartic, uh, and I think Absolutely. for everybody, Cathartic. Uh, a couple more. First off, A.L. Anderson, uh, he sent in this short uh, little clip. Uh, and I'll uh, First off, I'll, I'll just play this. I don't think you'll be able to hear it, but um, I'll read it to you after, though. Sure, sure. Hall Anderson sent he sends $20 as a to send Ted back. I missed what? his energy. Always thought RPG was funny even when he was going at Ralph <laughs> and Nick. The feeling on Twitter that his return has generated his comedy gold. 
Current state of gay log Twitter. Down here, salt is a way of life. <laughs> Obviously, the environment down here is all salt. The, the ceiling is salt, the floor is salt, the walls are salt, and to the extent the air is salt. And you breathe that in and you constantly taste the salt. <laughs> down here, salt is a way of life. You'll have to go back and listen to that, Ted. Holy shit. Uh, but he said, it. great to see Ted back. I miss his energy. Always thought RPG was funny, even when he was going at Ralph and Nick. He was part of the, the Cozy Crew uh, back in the day. He said, the seething on Twitter that has that his return has generated is comedy gold. Current state of gay log Twitter, and then it was salt is a way of life. Perfect clip. Um, and Real Wicked Wally uh, with a super chat says this, ultimately we, ultimately we all shake hands at the end of the day on failed social climber Mike Lowry being an absolute faggot. And I would have to agree. We will have to shake hands on that. Uh, I will co-sign that. that. I'll co-sign that. Now, is there anything I left out? Is there anything you want to address here at the end? Uh, I feel like it was pretty thorough. Maybe later tonight I'll be shaking my head wishing I'd ask something. But uh, I think we had, uh, what, Daniel? Three? Did we go three hours? Holy shit, are you serious? Hold on, and I'll, crazy, and I'll play that. Did we actually go three hours? Hold, I thought it was two, and I just looked at the clock, and it's 6.30, dude. We actually went three full hours with this. That was I, wild, I'm man. actually in shock. This is one of the longest interviews I've done in a while, but it was needed. <laughs> uh, but it was needed. Is there anything I left out? Is there, and by the way, Grugman, I'll play that right after, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and let him get out of here. Um, is there anything I left out, anything you want to say to the people who supported you, the people who hated you, any factoid, any just uh, word of advice, anything you want to say right now, this is your time. Well, as far as the interview goes, I mean, thanks for having me, man. It really oh, is. Thank um, you. It is an honor to be here on the Kill Stream. Um, I'm glad that we finally got to do this. It was something that I wanted to do sooner. Like there definitely were some opportunities to do it sooner, but no, I was really, was right. I was, yeah, this was this was the right time to do it. So uh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. As far as like the interview itself, I think we covered everything. Like, we covered <laughs> not everything, but we covered a lot. Just about. Um, yeah. Just about everything. Um, now I can, you know, like on my own stream, I can delve deeper into sure. a lot of these topics that we covered. Uh, I do apologize if I got a bit like rambly at points because there's no. just like so much that I'm trying to, to hit that I, I probably veered off a couple times. No, no, there, no, no. That's what I time. want. That's what I love. With the, that's what we want on the kill stream. I, I want the guests to speak. You get more that way. Um, you get things revealed. You get emotions revealed um, that you wouldn't get otherwise just by letting people speak. So, no, don't apologize for that at all. All right, cool, cool. Um, as far as, you know, what I would say to, like, the haters, I don't know. I don't really have much to say to them. Like, the, the only thing that I really – would like to see it's not going to come as a direct result of this but but what i would like to see eventually is that people like do see my side of the story because there's so much um like there's so much disinformation there's so much like manipulation of the timeline and when i see what like it's just so weird you know because i do i do obviously see negative comments i know i just said a moment ago that i try to avoid it and i do it but sometimes you just see it anyway like it's the internet you know and it's just crazy to me when I see pe like just the certain things that people say about me. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a bad guy. I've never done anything wrong to anybody. Like in my life, I have never wrong. Not that I'm perfect. Right? Not that I'm immaculate. We've all made mistakes. We've all we've all done things to people that we shouldn't have. But like, generally speaking, like I I'm not a bad guy. And then when I see what these people are saying about me and they're like, Oh, like, are these, like, I'm just like, this is insane. They created this caricature of who I am. And like, they hate this, 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 um, it's like a specter. They hate like this specter of me with like all of their might. And I'm just hoping that at some point, eventually people, uh, get the other side of the story because there is, there's two sides to every story. There is another side 
to this story. And a lot of people, I would ask them to like reconsider what you heard about what went down, the way that it went down, because people don't realize how outnumbered I was. Uh, people don't realize what was really going on behind the scenes. People, people think that this all happened organically. People think that like one day out of the blue, you know, you know, see how they play that clip. They just they just played it for the heck of it. They just played it. That's there really was an actual uh, there was an actual conspiracy to take me out, and um, you know, so I don't really have anything to say beyond that to the haters. I would just ask people to you know reconsider their um, their their preconceptions of of me and of what happened because you know at the end of the day, like if you are conservative then there's really no reason at all why you should hate my guts. If you are a conservative, dissident, right-winger, if you're a nationalist, if you're a, you know, racist, sexist, homophobe, etc. <laughs> no, there's, like, no reason why you should hate me. Like, we should be on the same team. We should be fighting the same fight. Um, you might think that you're fighting the good fight opposing Nick. You know, I, at one point in time, thought the same. But, um, you know, things change. And clearly, Nick is the one who is leading the pack, he's leading the charge, even if you have certain personal grievances with him, it's undeniable that uh, rhetorically speaking, he is setting the stage, he's setting the narrative, all these influencers, Daily Daily Wire is, you know, like, basically the conversations between Nick and Olaf Khan Inc. at this point, Candace yes. Owens, Daily Wire, uh, the, the CEO, Jeremy Boring of Daily Wire, he... That blew my even, mind. That blew my yeah, mind. it's like, that's crazy. Like Daily Wire, I think is the largest right wing publication, or online maybe it's the largest one on, on the internet. He admitted to and watching Nick's show. Yes, yes, and he said, "Oh, you're talented and you're funny." And this is the CEO of the largest or one of the largest right wing uh, news outlets in the world. You know, so like this is like you know what I'm saying. Like he's been totally, totally vindicated in many of his positions that people at the time they frowned upon. And yeah, like if anybody has enough hours of, of streaming footage, you can pour through it. You can find when somebody they slipped up, they misspoke, they 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 were making a point that out of context sounds a lot worse than it actually. You can do that to any person. Maybe they just had a bad take, man. When you talk for so many hours every day, sometimes you just have a bad take too, right? Like that can happen. Right, right. Like sometimes you put a bad take out there, you get some pushback, you realize your take was bad, you correct it later. You know, so like that that just happens. That just happens when you're a streamer, when you're a human being. That's just the way it goes. So it's very, very easy to put someone under the microscope and say, oh, but what about that one time you did this? What about that one time you said that? I mean, look, like I'm not a serial killer. I'm not a rapist. I'm not anything. These people, they even say, like this, like this other ridiculous sneer, they say that, they say that I'm a wife beater. Like, like, it, yeah, it, I've it's heard funny that too, because my, said my, about me too. Uh, but anyway, I won't address it. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It's not true. But anyway, go ahead. No, but it's 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 based on a clip where I was talking about how I never how I never hit a woman like that. That that was the point of the clip. I was talking about how I didn't understand how anybody could ever lay their hands on a woman. I said even when I was at my angriest in my life, I never would have done that. So that was that was the point that I was making. That turned into I beat my wife, <laughs> or I, I I mean I was never married, whatever girlfriend, whatever they said. They said I was a white beater because I said that I would never hit a woman. You said that you weren't. That's the sector, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that right there is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Like, whatever you think about me, whatever you think I said, whatever you think happened, there's a real possibility that the complete opposite of what they told you I said <laughs> is what actually happened. That's the perfect example of the sector, right? There. It really is because that's what they do. That's what they do. Like they take reality, they invert it, they take a clip, they they chop it up in a certain way. So um, yeah. So when it comes to the haters, I guess that's everything that I have to say to them. When it comes to the people who support me, I just want to thank you guys for uh, not joining the bandwagon because surely that would have been the easy thing to do. That would have been the convenient thing to do. Right? Like, it's hard to back somebody up when it does seem like the tide is turning against them. Like, nobody wants... But, but that's also when you realize 
who the true right or dies are. And, you know, if anything good came out of this, that's one of them. You know, there are people who stood by me to this day who they didn't have to do that because they could have just, you know, taken the, the easy, the easy route, like many others did. But, um, you know, they, they really got it. They really saw what happened to me and they, they found it objectionable. And, uh, you know, they all know who they are. I'm not going to name anybody because I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, yeah. put that on them. But so I think that pretty much covers it all. Well, I think so that. too. Uh, and I want to say a couple things myself, uh, but there's one more super chat. Uh, and then I'm going to say that, um, uh, corn pop says it literally might be Mossad FBI, or the gay fish, he says, that come with the hate, brush it off like water hitting a duck's ass, is what he says. Um, I want to say this. Uh, I want to thank you, first off, uh, Ted Feaser, uh, RPG TV, uh, for coming on the show today. Uh, I want to thank you. We've had a, a pretty good back and forth in private. Uh, not every day or anything like that, but we've had some some um, consequential conversations, I feel like, uh, that kind of changed my perspective uh, as well. And, uh, you know, as far as our beef, you know, I, I'm I'm sorry I took, I took it as far as I did. Like you said earlier, I know you, you feel the same way. Uh, and I think you're a stand-up guy. Uh, and I thank you for giving me this interview. Uh, and I think it was really, really good and educational. Uh, so I wish you the best. Uh, and hopefully we get to talk again sometime. Oh, we definitely will. We, we definitely will be in communication very soon. So... Um, like you said, there's a storm coming, and I think there might be some collaborative efforts that uh, that unfolds there. So I will be talking to you very soon, man. Thanks for having me. Great honor. And, um, yeah, thanks for the, the three-hour interview. I had no great, idea. Dude, oh, no, that's another thing I was going to say. It flew by, dude. It just flew by. I was sure it was two hours, and I looked down, and I said, God. I said, damn, it's three. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to have to chop this up a little bit when I clip it out. Oh, my God. I didn't know we went. It just flew by, man. Uh, I felt like uh, you, you were really easy to talk to, uh, and I think the audience felt the same way because we held the audience pretty much the whole time. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, it's man. Funny. It's oh, funny because uh, – sorry to cut you off, no. but uh, it's funny because when you asked me to come on, like I had – Today's today's full agenda was already mapped. Like, there's a lot of shit I'm supposed to be doing right now. Like, I totally neglected. But I was like, oh, I I I, I can't say no. I said no. You know, there's a couple there was a couple requests, prior requests. Yes. Um, I wasn't ready for it. But I'm like, ah, oh, fucking Kino faggot. He got permanently suspended, tag teamed by me and Ethan. I was like, I have to do it. I have to do it. And I I knew. Originally, I wanted to tell you, let's keep it to an hour. I knew that was never going to happen. <laughs> just I was like, you know There's what? too much, man. There's too much. Yeah. I didn't know it would go this long, though, and I just want to thank you again for giving me the exclusive, uh, for being so cool, uh, for putting all the bad stuff behind us. Uh, I wish you the best in life, and we will be in contact very soon, uh, and I appreciate you coming on today. Thank you so much, Ralph. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. RPG TV, Ted Feaser the legend. Press one if you're a Feaser head. Let's go! Kill Stream Classic declared by the Ralpha Mail, and we ain't done yet. Groupman sent $10. Let's go! Let's fucking go! Oh, 